it's pretty cool. And, and actually, uh, I remember going with my dad to watch some of these games when I was uh, a kid living here. So now, um, you know, to play in it, I'm sure it's going to be a full barn. And, um, you know, Edmonton has such loyal hockey fans, whether it's to the Golden Bears and obviously the Oilers um, fan base is, is next to none. So it'll be uh, it'll be a good crowd. This is definitely a game that, you know, they, they get up for all, all year. And um, we have to match that intensity. It's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a proving point for them and for us. And, um, you know, they have this, this one circle in their calendar, so they're going to come out hard. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a lifelong uh, dream of mine, and uh, going to be a lot of family and friends out here tonight for me. So uh, pretty excited. I'm pretty sure it's still going to be a pretty intense game. Uh, there's some uh, a lot of good players on their team, and uh, obviously a lot of good players on our team. So it should be a good matchup. I mean, it's really exciting uh, to be able to get here in Edmonton and, and really play our first exhibition game here in town. So I'm really excited to to get this one going. Every game, every time I put on, on the equipment, I think uh, you know I'm always in that competitive atmosphere and in that mood. You know I hate losing, and uh, it's going to be the same tonight. I know for a fact that they're going to have their systems in place. They've been they've been practicing, so the, their structure will be very good. So uh, we're just going to have to go out there, keep things simple, play with our uh, play to our strengths, um, just try to be efficient in our defensive zone, puck management through the neutral zone. Then uh, we, and like we have to shoot the puck. I think. Uh, in the offensive zone, uh, we have to have a high volume of shots to be successful, and uh, it was very evident in Penticton uh, when we weren't shooting the puck, uh, things weren't happening for us. So we, if we get a chance to shoot the puck, we have to shoot the puck and drive the net. Simple hockey. A story tradition returns. A game that went on over 20 years starting in 1988 but ended in 2009 is back as the University of Alberta Golden Bears will take on the Edmonton Oilers rookies tonight. And joining me up here at Clark Drake Arena is head coach of the U of A, Ian Herbers. Ian, thanks for joining me today. Great, thank you. All right, well, let's start this off. You played 22 games for the Edmonton Oilers. What's it like playing against a team that you used to play for? Um, well, it's going to be exciting tonight. It'll be a large crowd here. Uh, good competition for us. Great exposure for our program. Uh, great experience for our guys. Uh, so looking forward to it. I think I played in that first game, the 88 game. That was my first year here at U of A. I've played two games for the Golden Bears. I've also played one game on the rookie side for the Oilers. Um, right now I'm 3-0 and and I want to keep that streak going. But it's always good. It's a fantastic. The Oilers are supporting us like this uh, and getting our program into the spotlight. Give us a little inside info because this game hasn't been played for several years. What are these? What is the atmosphere like at these games? Well, it's, well, I know our guys are pumped to play, and it's a chance for them to showcase a little bit. And our guys are still have a hope of trying to play in the NHL one day. It's not the, I guess the the original route or coming through the Western Hockey League and getting drafted and everything else. They're taking a little longer route, uh, but they're working on their degree, getting their education. Uh, so they get pumped up and excited for this game. And it's a chance here for the Oilers rookies, the young guys, to sh give the brass one more chance to s show what they can do and prove they belong in the National Hockey League. Right now the Golden Bears are 3-0 and coming into this game, but there's not much scouting tape on the Edmonton Oilers rookies. They played in three games in Penticton at the Young Stars Classic, but what can you tell us about this Oilers rookies team? Well, definitely bigger than will be. Um, they have some skill. Um, not much because they haven't really had a chance for practice wise so they haven't been to incorporate a lot of the system play that they want to use uh, we'll definitely have the advantage there because our team's pretty much a returning team from last year we'll have that advantage over the oiler rookies you have several players on the team that have actually played in that 2009 the last matchup between these two teams talk about the experience of these young guys coming up you have a team with a lot of experience yeah, we had uh, Sean Ringrose and I think Bartow or a couple of guys that have played in, in that last rookie game. Um, any chance we can get into games like this with a huge crowd and getting all the media coverage is great experience for our guys for going to nationals. Uh, so we want to put our guys through experiences like this so we can get better and improve. You are a player in this series, but also now you're a coach. How amped up do these players, these college players, get to play professional athletes, especially out with the hometown team? Well, they get to ease it up a little bit because they're all in classes this morning and uh, some of them will be classes right up to game time. Uh, we had 14 academic All-Canadians last year and four guys that were just point, point one out from being academic All-Canadians. So our, the education side is very big for our program. Uh, it's just important as hockey. We want to excel uh, national title as well as having the academic All-Canadians and our guys getting good degrees. 
This is a series that went on for over 20 years, and now it's back after being ended in 2009. What's it feel like to be the head coach that brings back such a storied tradition? Well, it's great uh, having Craig McTavish, uh, my old roommate, and that when I played with the Oilers there for those 22 games. Uh, it's nice to get that support again and, and working together. And the Oilers do so much for the Edmonton community that it's we just really appreciate it. So it's going to be a great experience tonight, uh, a lot of fun. Uh, we're looking forward to it. All right, thanks a lot, Ian, for taking the time to talk to us. Great, thank you. It's a beautiful afternoon in Edmonton throughout the day. Nice little breeze and you know what? As we come to the end of summer, it's only fitting that we reincarnate one of the proud traditions of this community and that is the reinstallment of the annual Edmonton Oiler Rookie versus University of Alberta game. My first trip to Claire Drake Arena. So glad to be here. Jack Michaels alongside Bob Starr for the Oiler Rookies. 0-3 in Penticton over the weekend against the likes of Calgary, Winnipeg, and Vancouver prospects, all of whom markedly superior elite offensive talent, especially up front. Tonight, they'll get the University of Alberta Golden Bears, 3-0 already this season, 38-7 a year ago, and certainly one of a very short list of favorites to win what would be their 14th CIS National Championship. Bob. You're just bubbling with enthusiasm tonight. I know you're excited to have this game back in the community, and I know tonight features the clash of your two favorite groups of colors. Yes, uh, though I'm not a big fan of the Bears' new jerseys, but uh, you know, Craig McTavish came in as the general manager when Daryl Cates and Kevin Lowe elected to make the change with Steve Tamblini, and within a week, uh, this game was back on. And you know, Craig McTavish, his roommate, during the, uh, 90, in the uh, mid 1990s, for a while, was Ian Herberts. And Ian Herberts is the head coach at the University of Alberta now. Uh, Ian came in and uh, did a, a really good job last year, jump starting the program. Uh, they've gotten into a bit of a slide, and uh, we will see tonight, uh, as the Team Canada World Junior team saw last December, that Alberta is skilled. They are undersized, but they're skilled and they work hard. And uh, the Oiler rookies are going to have the better high end prospects on the back end. But uh, Alberta is going to give uh, the other rookies 
is all they can handle in this matchup in particular just because of the nature of the makeup of the uh, winter rookie squad up front. This will be my 21st out of 23 games that I'll see. And there has been a lot of years where some of the, you know, the Oilers had two or three really good high-end offensive prospects in the lineup. Tonight, a couple injuries are going to change the complexion, the makeup of the Oilers rookies team, and that's going to result in a major challenge for Todd Nelson and his squad. The University of Alberta has a 12-10 edge in this series, Bob. For those not familiar with the makeup of the two rosters, that may catch someone by surprise. Break it down for our listeners and give them an informative look at why this game sometimes, sometimes more often than not, quite frankly, favors the University of Alberta. Well, U, U of A players are all ex-major junior players, and they're 22, 23, 24. The team plays with structure and process, and they're familiar with each other. Alberta's only adding one new player from last year's team that probably should have won a national championship. They, you know, they, they lost the game 2-1 where they outshot the opposition 43-13 and hit five goal posts in that game. Alberta will have uh, 10 20 goal scorers out of the WHL, 10 guys that had at least one 20 goal season, 10 50 point players, seven guy or four guys that had more than uh, 70 points, and six forwards that had more than 60. The other rookies in today's game will have one forward that had a 60 point season in Major Junior Hockey. Now, there's no Oscar Clefbaum or Darnell Nurse on the Alberta Golden Bears, but the older, more mature, and frankly, the higher end offensive players are in Alberta's lineup in this matchup tonight. And the numbers back up exactly what Bob's saying. Their top 10 scorers returned from a year ago, all of whom are at least 23 years of old, yeah. except for Levko Koper, and he's going to turn 23 in about three weeks. To just bring that into perspective, Jordan Everly is 23 yeah. years old. Well, and, and the guys that played out west uh, in the WHL have gone on to the National Hockey League. They know how good the players are in Alberta State. That was never an issue uh, for the, the kids that have come out of the Western League. So Tyler and Bons all but four of the roster players for the University of Alberta are out of the Western League. Yeah. I mean, this is well, that, primarily a provincial lineup, too. And, and that's 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 a high year. Like, there's been years where there's only been, you know, one or two. There's been a lot of years of the Bears program where every player was a WHL grad. So is it fair to say, Bob, that the makeup of the University of Alberta roster year after year, for those who may be listening in the States that are big Oiler right. fans, is it similar to the University of Minnesota Golden Gopher hockey team yeah. where for years most of them are in state? Is it well, fair to say that the Golden Bears more often than not are truly an Alberta one, squad? They're for the most part a Northern Alberta squad. Yeah. That's how, I mean, right now Northern Alberta produces as, as many National Hockey League players as, as any other region in the world. There's, there's one part of the Czech Republic per capita, per capita, that is producing more players. So, you know, and what happens here in Edmonton is there was no WHL team for a long time. And so people knew how good this level was because next to the Oilers, this was the next best level of town. And in fact, the last time the Golden Bears played the Edmonton Oil Kings, which was back in the early 1970s, the Bears beat the Oil Kings 10-1. Okay, so that was before the Bears program was recruiting extensively out of the WHL. So this is, a, like you said, an older, mature squad, high-end skill. We have a goaltender tonight for the Alberta Golden Bears, Curtis Mooka, that was offered a contract by the owners organization in 2009. He's an all-Canadian goalie. He yeah. turned down going to Oklahoma City as a backup goalie and ended up coming to school a year later. He was at this game in 2009, the last time it was played. He played very well. As a member of the Oiler rookie squad. Yeah, and there's and most of the players are in that situation. And Sean Ringrose, who we'll hear from tonight, scored the game-winning goal in that game. The last time this contest was played, the University of Alberta won it. They've won seven of the last nine, in fact. Again, the series goes all the way back to 1988. The last year, the man for whom this arena is named was head coach of the University of Alberta. Time for a break for our national anthem. We'll be right back. I think that was important. To... You're right, I take that stuff for granted.
Back at Claire Drake Arena, which is really a treat in itself. My first visit to the building, constructed in 1959. Capacity 3009, includes standing room, and they're still filing in to the University of Alberta campus. Again, Claire Drake, I mean, Bob, this is unfair to you, but try to encapsulate what he has meant to this community, what he has meant to this program, and what he has meant to this university. Well, he was ahead of his time. I mean, modern penalty killing, as we know, was put in place by Claire Drake, and buildings named after the winningest coach in CIS history. All you need to know is Canada's head coach of the upcoming Olympics, Mike Babcock, Ken Hitchcock, two of the members of that coaching staff, credit Claire Drake, and Bill Moores, and George Kingston, who was in Calgary, and Dave King in uh, Saskatchewan as the real forebears of a, a different style of coach that's now quite prevalent in the National Hockey League. Starting lineups for Edmonton, it'll be Tyler Buns in the net, 27 out of 32 and a loss to the Calgary Flames rookies on Thursday. Up front, Marco Waugh gets the call in the middle with Austin Fighton and Kyle Platzer, who leads the Oilers rookies with two goals thus far at rookie camp. And defensively, it's Brandon Davidson wearing the C along with Darnell Nurse, the seventh overall selection in this year's NHL entry draft. And sent down low immediately by the University of Alberta Golden Bears, wearing the green and gold. Oilers in the white, outlined in orange and blue. Tory Dick up front along with Johnny Lazo and Ring Rose. Again, the game winner the last time this game was played. And then Colin Joe and Jesse Craig, a couple of veteran defensemen back there for Alberta to start. And the Golden Bears absorbing a punishing hit and funneling it down low to Tyler Buns and taking a big shot. We've got benches on the opposite sides. I mean, this building is truly old school. Tory Dick really took some punishment. Here's a shot by Lincoln Alter, and that rattled right off the post as Linda Mulder really wound one up and drove it past the glove of Tyler Bunce, but clicked the outside of the iron. One of the better skaters, if not the best, in the CIS attended the Oilers' development camp back in the summer. And the Bears are able to dump it back into the Oilers' zone. Ben Betker will play it for Edmonton. Sixth round pick this summer. Over to Kale Kessie, and Kessie took a hard pop along the end boards. Oilers move it up the left side. We're playing automatic icing tonight. And there's the first call with the automatic icing. A minute 15 in the scoreless first period. And way up there was Mark Uh One thing to look for here in this building, it's very boxy in the corners. Yeah, the curves are really and kind of play, subtle. And it is... Uh, so you'll get what you're saying is angled bounces yeah. into the slot. And that is a huge benefit to Albert. I'd say it's worth three quarters of a goal on average per game during the course of the season for the Golden Bears hockey team. High, high boards as well, Jack. Referees Fraser Lawrence and Colin Watt, linesman Darren Spurgeon and Dwayne Yacobo. Off the draw, here's a shot from a point, and that was blocked against Thomas Carr. He'll recover and just punch it down low. Ben Becker will settle it down. Curtis Muka, as we talked about, starting in net for Alberta, opposite Tyler Buns, who played last year pro. In fact, both Buns and Muka at one time have suited up for the Stockton Thunder. Another icing call whistled against the Oilers rookies and will bring it back into the Edmonton zone with a minute 34 gone by in our scoreless first period. Jack Michaels, Bob Stauffer here to bring you the call of the Oilers rookies against the University of Alberta Golden Bears for the first time since 2009. Jordan Eberle, Sam Gagne, Devin Dubnik among those current Oilers who have played in this game. Sent down low, in fact, Jordan Everly and Bob Stauffer communicated a little bit in today's modern world prior to the start of today's game. Everly recognizing my partner's anticipation. Sent down low, Rhett Rachinsky, the one-time Edmonton Oil King. Boy, did he come score a couple of clutch goals for the Oil Kings in his major junior career. Up the right-hand side, Marincin for the Oilers left to right in a late offside call. I mean, Rhett Rachinsky will never be confused with an otherworldly sniper, but he was a clutch guy for the Oil Kings. Absolutely, and scored 27 goals as a 20-year-old that year and then was stellar in the playoff. Uh, helped the Oil Kings end up knocking off the Portland Winterhawks in the final. But very quiet year last year, George. Scored game four in overtime yeah. to beat Portland, and then the year before he scored in the play-in game in overtime to send them, and here's a chance, wrist shot score! University of Alberta right off the rush coming down the middle and putting one upstairs on the glove. That was well done 
and not much of a chance as going upstairs is Ringrose. He was the man who scored the last goal the last time these two teams played. And he scores the go-ahead goal at 2-12. Sean Ringrose, high glove against Tyler Bunce. Lions got a lot of speed with Ringrose and Lazo and Dick up front. Right down the middle, and the Bears take a 1-0 lead. Face off at center, controlled by Oscar Clefbaum, and he'll whistle one to the corner. Linda Mulder taken against the boards, and now the Bears look to attack again. Right to left, it's Lazo over center. He'll reach the Edmonton line, hit by Gurnett, and the Oilers quickly jam it back to center. Big hit on the far side, that's gonna be a penalty as getting up and not liking the shot he took from Carr was Ty Bilkey. Bilkey was drilled by Thomas Carr, and we're gonna have a penalty at 2.46 here. That occurred right in front of the Oiler bench, which is on the far side of the arena as Bob and I look at it. Golden Bear bench is right in front of it. So the green and gold on the near side, nearest our broadcast location, and the orange and blue on the opposite side. Thomas Carr is gonna get a misconduct here as well for that hit, so, I mean, that was a nasty piece of business there. Carr, the former captain of the Medicine Hat Tigers, played for Sean Clouston down there, had a great 20-year-old year, 41-point season, and he is a physical guy, and Bilkey, uh, that one stung him a bit. Led the Bears defenseman in points two years ago. Off the faceoff, it's a power play for Edmonton, and here's Nurse with a blast off the post. It's partially redirected, and he'll get it back from Davidson. Right circle swung it over to Waugh. Eluded his grasp, but Austin Fighton is there to settle it down. Davidson, left point for Nurse to the middle, Waugh, and he lost the handle, and it's easily cleared up the middle. By Jordan Hickmont, team's leading scorer from a year ago for the University of Alberta. Oilers will gain the zone left to right. Here's Waugh to Davidson, fake the shot, dishes off to Nurse. Top of the left circle, Nurse centers. Platzer had it hacked away, however, by Linda Mulder, and it's quickly rifled up the left-hand side by Brett Ferguson, a one-time teammate of Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Alberta is very active on the PK. They'll think nothing of attacking on the counter. Boiler power play just one out of 16 in Penticton, where they lost all three games. Two by a score of five to two, and one other game by seven two. Steal by Platzer, and then shorthanded through it on net. Now a wrister off, Muka, and that drop behind the goal line, and Edmonton's tied it up. 1-1, power play goal as Muka was handcuffed, and it dropped over the goal line, I believe, before Platzer got there. So credit for the goal should go to Greg Chase. I think Chase is gonna get it, the Calgary Hitman. What a bizarre play, the puck ricocheted off the skate of the official. And then Muka had to make a save, and Chase took a swat at it. It ricocheted off of the Golden Bear defender back in the goal past Curtis Muka. And Greg Chase has a pair during this rookie camp for Edmonton. We are tied at one. Power play goal for the Oilers, just their second in 17 attempts during the rookie camp. They're gonna say unassisted. I thought Platzer should get credit for an assist there, but in any event, University of Alberta will spill it back into the offensive zone as we're back to five on five hockey. So the Oilers make Carr pay for the boarding call and Edmonton has forged a one one tie. Ringrose, the man who scored for Alberta, right down the seam and he put it high glove on Tyler Bunce. Unable to hold the puck in this time, Colin Joe wheels it over to Jesse Craig. He turns it over and Reed Petrick getting his first action for the Oiler rookies will shovel it in, but it's offside with 15-23 to go in our first period in a game that is tied at one. You won't see a much more bizarre goal than that, but you know what? The Oiler rookies needed that. They needed a little bit of positive momentum going, and I think you'll see Ring Rose, uh, the Ring Rose goal. Lazo and Dick will pick up assists, and maybe we'll see Platzer get an assist on the chase goal when it's all said and done. Face off left side of Tyler Buns, and here's Jamie Crooks on the ice for the University of Alberta. And Crooks is the only newcomer to this roster. Again, veteran laden and a team expected by many to be in the serious hunt for a national championship this year. 
Alberta works it up the left-hand side, a two-on-one. Here's Ferguson over the line. He finds Dabrowski, but the pass hopped over Dabrowski's stick and is contained by Ian Barteau. Now Linda Mulder, left circle. Backdoor play, and that was off-target intended for Crooks. Now it's Ferguson trying to jam it into the interior, kicked out by Buns, and now Ben Betker has run off the puck rather easily. Thrown back to the point, and that's intercepted by Brandon Baddock and swung back towards center. There's a kind of evidence, Bob. I mean, sometimes that 18-year-old body, no matter how big it is, it's not as naturally strong as a guy who's 23 years old. The other thing is the speed of the Bears forwards on the forecheck. Ferguson moving in. And now an opportunity for Hickmont. Leading scorer on this club a year ago. Him and Ring Rose tied for the club lead if you go back two years in terms of goals. Craig takes a blast from the point that's blocked by Davidson. He'll chase it down for Edmonton. 1-1 tie, six minutes gone in this first period. Jack and Bob with you. Reed Wilkins as well. Oilers clear through the middle, and Gurnat was drilled. A hard shot by Hickmont. And Martin Gurnat playing forward tonight. Andrew Miller, a late scratch. So we're going to see him in the left wing position. Gurnat and Musil were going to be the defensive pair that scratched. Musil is indeed out of the lineup. Gurnat forced to go up front with a Miller scratch, and that developed late this afternoon. Golden Bears will dump it back into the Oilers' zone. And Davidson in a 1-1 game will find Austin fighting, streaking in left wing, shot was blocked. Travis Toomey looking for it. Now a blast by Joey Leach, and that sailed off the blocker of Muka and is handled by Darnell Nurse down low. Oilers collapse, deep right corner in the offensive zone. Oiler rookie game with U of A tied at one, thrown to the side of the net. Muka will try to freeze it, and finally the net is driven off its moorings. Curtis Muka. 34 and 10 in his first three years for the Golden Bears, product of Sherwood Park. And as we talked about, played for the Oiler rookies the last time this game was held back in 2009. He's scheduled to go to the first 30, as is Tyler Buns for Edmonton. And Curtis Mooka came into camp that year after his 19 year old year in Portland. And this is when Portland was not a good hockey team. Uh, and outplayed Aaron Sorge, and then who was Alberta's goaltender, and it basically earned him a spot down in Springfield, but elected to return to major junior hockey. Off the faceoff, Joey Leach throws it behind the net, looking as Petrick back to the point, cleft bomb, and now Leach. No saucer one behind the net, careens off the boards right to Linda Mulder, and the Bears break out. Up the right hand side, here's Lazo in over the line, grabbing it, Ring Rose, and he just missed. The net. That was an opportunity for Ringrose to get his second already. Early stages of this first period, barely seven minutes having been played. Clefbaum using his size in the corner, couldn't get it out. Torrey Dick with a chance right circle, but that shot was broken up by Leach. And now Clefbaum is back on it, pinned along the end boards. He'll find Petrick, and the breakout pass delivered to Leach. He'll carry to center, and then rifle one off the glass, bounces a couple times, kicks directly to Muka behind the net. Linda Mulder will play it up the left-hand side. Crooks after Ring Rose took a bump, got it ahead to Brawlski a shot, and that handcuffed Tyler Buns a bit, but he was able to hold it and no rebound. 12-13 to go in the first period. Each team with three shots on goal. Ring Rose for the U of A and Greg Chase for Edmondson. We're tied at one. Ben Linda Mulder, you mentioned he attended Oilers Development Camp. This is his fifth and final year of eligibility. He's a transfer from Northern Michigan. Came, uh, left Northern Michigan due to a family situation. He's played the last three years in the U of A. Would not be surprised if uh, he potentially were to get signed by uh, Spring or uh, Oklahoma City at the end of the year. Off the faceoff, Colin Joe, a shot does not get through. It's deflected a couple times, and Baddock lays it ahead for Cameron Abney, the third round pick of the Oilers back in 2009. Chase Shaber goes in for the big hit, missed, and the University of Alberta will emerge with puck possession. Up the left-hand side, too far for Crooks and Marinchin to settle this one down. A full year last season in Oklahoma City for Marinchin under head coach Todd Nelson, who of course is guiding the Oiler rookies through camp. Main camp opens tomorrow with testing and physicals. Here's Brett Ferguson on a turnover. Wrist shot short side left circle, missed the net. And the rebound hops off the boards all the way back to center. Ferguson played two full seasons in Red Deer with Ryan Nugent up. Shot left point by Chase Shaver entering the zone for the Oilers. Save Buka, rebound out to the point, and Levko Koper will bank it off the wall up the left-hand side. Koper, a couple of years ago, was with the Jets prospects in Penticton, and technically, Bob, he scored the first goal in modern Winnipeg Jets history, at least with that 
new uniform on anyways to see open the scoring for the Jets in their opener down there a couple years back. He can finish at 32 in the WHL Spokane one year. Along with Baron Smith, who's not in the lineup tonight for the U of A, the only two draft picks on the roster of the Bears. And now Hickmott with a wrist shot left circle tests Tyler Bonds, who's equal to the task. 10.50 to go first period. We are tied at one. And, and why is that generally, Bob? Are these guys probably the best of the overlooked guys in their draft yeah. year as far as CIS elite talent? Well, Alberta and UNB, New Brunswick. Yeah are the most competitive schools. St. Mary's is in the mix. And then Saskatchewan gets a lot of players just because the amount of WHL teams in that province. And a lot of Saskatchewan kids go home and play there. Darnell Nurse able to clear to center and now a chance for Petrick, but he couldn't slide it over to Greg Chase, who was open. And it remains 1-1 as the puck punched into the corner by the Bears. Shaber will pick it up, elude one man, stumbling a bit, back to the point, open as Nurse, faking, now winding and firing, save, rebound. No, off the side of the net, Greg Chase had a great look and jammed it up against the edge of the post. Back to the point for Nurse. Davidson will fire, and that was blocked. The carom played by Nurse himself. He'll stay just inside the blue line and kick it over to Davidson on the right-hand side. He'll fling it behind the net for Shaber, and then out to the point for Nurse, but this time he fails to hold the zone, and now Lazo in hot pursuit. Token pressure, and he'll peel off on a change for the green and gold. Halfway through this first period, we are tied at one. Ring Rose open the scoring for the U of A, and then Chase came back with the equalizer off the glove of Mooker. Just trickled over the goal line. Here's Cameron Abney down low, right corner for the Oilers. Hemmed in, coming over to help out is Travis Awanek. Awanek dug it free to Batic, got it back quick, shot, save, rebound. Batic scores off the backhand side. And a loose rebound issued by Mooka. And Brandon Batic, the Edmonton Oil King, makes him pay. It's 2 1 in favor of the Oiler prospects. Time to goal. 10, 21. Well, the bigger forwards coming through there for the Oiler rookies. Baddock, the member of the Edmonton Oil Kings, out on the line with Cameron Abney, and they won a puck battle down low against the Golden Bears' fourth line. And dare I say that Curtis Mooka maybe gives up the second one that he'd like to have back, but a big goal for the Oil Kings, who, or uh, the Oil Kings, Brandon Baddock. And the Oiler rookies scored six goals in two games, two per game at the tournament. Penticton have got two tonight in the first 10 minutes of this one. That's going to be an Oil King hookup. That's going to be Baddock from Awanek. And it's sent in deep. Chasing it down, Kyle Platzer. Abney likely to get the second assist. And now Edmonton back to work in the offensive zone. Austin fight and spins away from traffic. Inside of Platzer, shoots just wide. Ticketed for that far post, but he missed. Joey Leach, cross ice. Kicks off the corner boards, digging after it, fighting. Threw it in the general direction of Marco Waugh, who skated right past it. Platzer gives it back to Waugh, shot to save. Mooka again juggles, does not hold the rebound. And the Oilers now with a 2-1 lead, buzzing in the U of A zone. Here's a chance by Waugh. Shot was blocked. Rebound out to the high slot. Betker doesn't get it through. Blocked again this time by Ian Barteau. Here's Leach, right circle, into a crowd, blocked. And Dabrowski will finally collect for the Golden Bears, reach center, and whistle one inadvertently out of play with 8.34 to go in this first period. And the Golden Bears now on the short end of a 2-1 score. Awanek and Abney setting up Branson, or excuse me, Brandon Baddock for the go-ahead goal. Got to like this response from the Oida rookies. Uh, I mean, a beautiful three-way passing play for the Alberta goal just two minutes into the game. But right now, the Oida rookies are outworking Alberta and grinding it out down low. Face off, one by Petrick, and I will say that Mooka's spilling a few rebounds, Bob. Yeah, he's had a subpar performance so far. Here's Linda Mulder up the middle. That's going to be knocked back into the zone. Taken by Jordan Rowley. Five years in the Western Hockey League. Kamloops and Prince Albert. High slot, Reddick, one-timer Linda Mulder, and a save made by goaltender Tyler Bunz. Kick mod after the puck down low. Shaber able to clear, kick by Chase, length of the ice, the automatic icing will call the proceedings to a halt with 8.01 remaining in the first period. And the Oilers out shooting the Bears 7-5 and leading by a score of 2-1. If I'm Todd Nelson, I'm really happy with how the Oilers rookie forwards are forcing the play against Alberta. Alberta's a smaller team, and they're getting it deep in the Bears zone and grinding it out down low. Here's Ring Rose against Patrick who played last year for the Everett Silvertips. Again, our first look at him in this rookie camp. 16 goals, 40 points last year for Everett. 
off the draw. That may be where Jujar Kara is headed after this year's rookie camp. He is scratched and not in tonight's lineup. Best Oiler in Penticton. Shot from the point taken by Colin Joe. That skips off the right pad of Buns. Relatively routine chance, and now Tory Dick. He's angled away from the puck. Petrick has it, and then banks it off the end board smartly to Marincin. He'll look up ice and give it up to Clefbaum. Right wing for Chase. Did he stay onside? No. Offside the call against the Oilers with 7.24 to go in this first period. And again, Edmonton's prospects up by a count of 2-1. to one. Bob, I don't mind telling you, I love the arena. I love the old school look of having the benches on the opposite sides. How about the standing room crowd as well? You gotta love that. Yep. Not a lot of room to breathe in this building. Nope. 3,009 the capacity. And off the faceoff, Martin Gernot is able to jam it back into the U of A.N. Linda Mulder to play it up the right-hand side. Waiting is Toomey, spins and delivers a pass that was behind Drew Nickel. Martin Gernat will chase it down for the Oilers. He'll send it behind his own net to Nurse and then get it right back. So Gernat has slid back and is playing a little D on this shift up the left-hand side. We've already seen him at forward. And he was smacked into pretty hard, Bob. Maybe Todd Nelson felt like he was putting Gernat yeah. in the line of fire. Far corner. Sometimes when you're playing a different position, you can forget about your angles and player positioning and really get yourself lined up. Some might say the way Gernat played the last couple of years in Edmonton, he should have been a forward with the Oil Kings. He was up a lot. Point production, 30 points in 45 games, including playoffs last year, an injury shortened season for him. Nurse will take a puck in the corner and he'll look up. Didn't get much. The, the high floater is not really there for you in this building. That was kind of a low one, and it's intercepted by Redick off to Coper. His shot saved. Buns doesn't know where the rebound is. Now thrown back in front, and Buns got his right pad on that one as well. As Hickma tried to take advantage of Buns, who did not see the rebound drop at his feet. Coper, an excellent chance, bidding to tie the game. Wall the other way, left to right for the Oilers. And now taking it down low for Platza right corner. Quick shot upstairs by Fighton, and that's snagged by Curtis Mooka with 5.53 to go in the opening frame, and it's 2-1 for the Oilers. A good opportunity for Levko Koper. He tried to beat Buns low to the blocker side. He was equal to the task. And then Austin Fighton, who's had a very quiet rookie camp for the Edmonton Oilers with maybe his best scoring opportunity of the four games that he's played. Fighting a former member of the uh, Lethbridge Hurricanes, played his 20-year-old uh, year after getting hurt playoff run with the Vancouver Giants. Off the draw, shot by Davidson, did squeeze through. The save was made by Muka, and then cleared by the U of A. Jamie Crooks up the left-hand side. He got popped by Davidson, fighting last year as a pro, split time between Idaho and the ECHL, and the Texas Stars of the American Hockey League. Ben Betker down low, back behind the net. Taken by Brandon Davidson. Glenn Gullitson, the one-time coach of the Texas Stars in the American League, now an assistant under John Tortorella. And are we looking forward to seeing how that coaching staff and team take shape? Sent in deep by the Oilers. U of A up the left-hand side. Dick will dump it in. Next week, we'll have a preseason game for you live from Vancouver. Turned over to the Bears. Quick shot, Dick. Rebound, save. Rebound, score! Rick Rose again. He was stopped on his first offering, but not the second. And this game is tied at two. Time of the goal, 15-02. It's Ring Rose's second of the night. Sean Ring Rose scored 28 goals and had 59 points as a 20-year-old with the Medicine Hat Tigers and was in a second line center role. He's basically averaged a point per game through his first four years at U of A. In the CIS, you get five years of eligibility. And uh, he's a real leader for this group. And came through there, banged home, second chance opportunity on the turnover. Scored twice in a 4-2 win over the University of Calgary on Friday. And he's found the scoring touch again. Led the team in scoring, in fact, two years ago. And then Hickmont took that honor, barely last season, edging out Ring Rose. Off the draw, Cameron Abney now in a 2-2 tie. Will dump it in from the left-hand side. Through an elbow in the general direction, a rally. Going to be chased down by Nickel of the Bears. And now Lazo trying to spoon one through to Rhett Richinsky, who did well to stay on side. But by the time he did, Oilers were able to take over. Clef bomb to Betker. Turned over at center, however. Toomey 
one on four situation, wins another puck battle. Rister to save made by Tyler Buns. Excellent work by Travis Toomey. And then Marco Waugh and him come together after that little dust up in front of the Oiler net. But that was Toomey in a one on four. He beat two Oilers just to get a shot off. Travis Toomey basically averaged about 110 penalty minutes a year over four years in the WHL. Played for Saskatoon in Seattle. His father, Jim Toomey, was an offensive lineman on the Golden Bears football team in the late 1980s and uh, has played in rookie games before. Face off right side of Tyler Buns and off the draw. Here's Linda Mulder down low. Hickmott looking at a give and go play with Coper, but picking it off was Ben Betker. And now Wall, right wing to Kyle Platzer, back to Wall on the attack, chips it over, backhander fighting, and he slid it wide. And the U of A regains puck possession. Oilers were looking to regain the lead. Now it's Coper streaking in, left wing shot, and that's deflected out of play here at Claire Drake Arena. 3.48 to go in the first period. Claire Drake, the head coach of the University of Alberta Golden Bears, seemingly forever, officially 58 through 89. He was the interim coach when they won a national championship in 1956. And the year after he retired in June of 1990, this place was christened as such. Went to the Winnipeg Jets to work as an assistant coach after the 88-89 season his last year here at Alberta. Face off right side of Buns, and the Oilers carry it forth. Darnell Nurse uncorks a blast, sent wide. He also took a couple of breaks during that long spell. Bob will fill you in on that a little bit later. Gurnad high slot, poke checked away, and now on the move is Brett Ferguson. Left circle cuts in, and a great play by Nurse. Just stripped him cleanly, then thrown in front. Quick shot, and Nabalski was denied from point blank range by Tyler Buns on a broken play. Dabrowski. Had a great look, went low glove, and Buns had the answer. We are tied at two, 319 to go in the first. Bob, this is an entertaining hockey game. High tempo game, and you just hope the two teams can continue with this pace throughout. And I think we can suggest that Tyler Buns has come here to play. He's had a solid performance so far. And again, he played better than his five goals against on 32 shots would suggest in Penticton against Calgary on Thursday. Face off to Bunz's left, off the draw, one by Ring Rose. Tori Dick, who has a pair of assists tonight, off to Lazo in the high slot, and that's squeezed by Bunz. And now it's starting to get nasty. Uh, Claire Drake, I mean, he's been all over the place. Bob, tell me about a couple of the little breaks he well, took. Well, he took a break in 79-80 to work with uh, Tom Watt in the Olympic program. And that year, Canada, basically in head-to-head -head matchups against the Americans, had the better record in exhibition play leading into the Olympics. We all know what happened. A great moment for hockey and for USA hockey. Off the draw, driven toward the net by Thomas Carr. Now eligible to play. Again, he took a 2 and a 10 earlier tonight. And a blocker save made by Bunce. That shot had some mustard on it. And now Tory Dick after it. Also got involved with the WHA yes. version of the Oilers. And that didn't last very long. <laughs> Bill Key to center. <laughs> Baddock will chip and charge behind the Golden Bear defense. That was in 74-75. Up the right-hand side. Alberta able to kick it free, and now on the move and driving to his left is Rowley. Put it up the gut. That was tipped away by Davidson, and he'll chase it down himself with help from Tyler Buns. Two and a half to go here in the first period, and now the Golden Bears are back in front of the shot clock at 12 to 9. Our score is tied at two. Muka a couple he'd probably like to have back, quite frankly, and Tyler Buns has made a couple of fine saves to prevent the Bears from perhaps doing further damage. Another dump in by the U of A. Davidson to cleft bomb. He'll rattle it up the left-hand side. Fighting took a peek. Nowhere to go with it. Turned it over. Coper tried to feed it in front. And that was broken up. And the Oilers now have a three on two. We got a penalty coming up. Here's Marco Waugh centering it just out of the reach of Platzer. But no question about it. As a potential three on one was looming, it was Ian Barteau who just had to reel in one of those Oilers, sent him flying. And now, for the remaining two minutes of this first period, the Oilers will be back on the power play where they converted early in this first period on a goal by Greg Chase. Ian Barteau, in his first couple of years at the U of A, looked like a guy that might be able to go on and play pro, and he has regressed in the last couple of seasons. Barteau had a 10-goal, 40-point season, 39 points with the Kootenai Ice, over 150 pims. And the Oilers rookies get their second PP to work with in the, the first period, and they were one for one so far. E. Colin Joe and Sean Ringrose, the current Bears, who were part of that last 2009 rookie game, won by the U of A. 
It's the last time this had been played up until tonight. Tonight's the 23rd installment and the resumption of a series important to both squads. And I certainly think it's kind of a, at this point, Bob, a piece of the community as well. Oilers move in left to right. Here's Platzer, top of the circle. Dishes off to Gurnett, working at the point with Marinchin on the power play. Now Platzer wide open in the slot. Down low to Waugh, couldn't get it upstairs. Muka makes the left pad save and again has trouble collecting it by the time he does. We're down to 117 to go in the period, and Marco Waugh had a couple of cracks at it and just couldn't get it about the six inches he needed to to get it over the outstretched left pad of the Bears netminder. Marco Waugh and Jajar Karia have been, to me, the two most impressive players that we've seen over these four games. And, and why? Because Waugh's always around the puck, and he's quick and makes plays. And, and they're around the net and they're all around the time. The net. Yep. Waugh and Karen, and for that matter, Greg Chase has found a way to get in there a number of times. Didn't have his best game on Sunday, but he's been around the net a lot. Scored his first goal of rookie camp on a tip in. Here's a lofted puck thrown up ice by the Bears. Again, the power play in effect for the balance of this first period. Darnell Nurse back to get it for the Oilers. Sends it over to Brandon Davidson, and they'll regroup, and here comes the rush. Final minute of the opening period. We are tied at two. Each team has led at one point. Chase Shaber hunting down a loose puck in the right corner. Freed it up for Petrick. He'll dance behind the U of A net. Out to the point, but his pass stolen away by Coper. Burst of speed around Davidson, and he charged into Davidson. The puck skittering to the opposite side of the rink where Darnell Nurse is there to take over. Punched it back to Davidson, who continues to be harassed by Coper. Coper's just flying out there. Seventh round pick of the Atlanta Thrashers back in 2009. Up the right hand side for Nurse, heading for the net. Couldn't get it upstairs. Hog tied by Tume. And now with 12 seconds to go in the period, the Bears will launch one length of the ice, and the Oilers are going to have to hurry if they want one final look on the power play. Down to five seconds, and Tume harassing Nurse, and time is going to expire before Edmonton can generate a scoring chance. So after an entertaining first period, Old well, Clefbaum took a pop, and the Oilers didn't like that. Clefbaum took a shot from Tume after the horn sounded, and the Oilers went right after, and this is what we discussed as potentially This is a, a bad matchup here. It's Bilkey out there against Lazo. Lazo. Yeah. And one of the Golden Bears have got to get in there for Johnny Lazo's sake. It's a total mismatch. Yeah, Bilkey's got him in a front face lock, wow. Bob. I don't think he's really trying to throw big-time punches. He knows... Milky is aware of the homework involved here. I don't think he's going to try to That might be Johnny one of Lazo. his first shifts since he got drilled by Thomas Carr. Right. We haven't seen him out there a lot, but uh, Bilkey, a player that had 37 fighting majors two years ago in the OHL, I think we know what he's here to do, and he's been impressive so far. Good period, some hits. Uh, the more aggressive team are probably the Golden Bears, but we're tied at two after one, and good tempo. You saw some of the set pieces that Alberta had off the face-offs. That's a sign of a team that's got the structural advantage because they're a team, Jack. And, you know, I, I, I like the way the Oda rookies played. I like how they Especially crashed their the response. After yeah. the first two and a half minutes, Bob, yeah. you and I were looking at another. Right now, the Golden Bears are attacking, yeah. and the Oilers were on their heels. And then Edmonton really gained a foothold. Yeah, they did. And, and you know what? The Thomas Carr hit on Bilkey kind of changed, I think, things. And woke the Oilers rookies up and said, hey, these guys are going to hit. They're going to come to play. I, Frankly, Jack, I would have thought Alberta would have played a, so, uh, a quieter and softer game. And I mean that in all sincerity. I'm surprised at some of the assertiveness and aggressiveness with the Golden Bear players. I mean, they've really forced the play. They've thrown a couple of bigger hits, and frankly, they've, they've instigated some of the little melees that have occurred so far. Two on hits. Uh, one obviously by Carr and one by two made the end of the period. And those guys weren't shrinking violence in the WHL. Okay, like Thomas Carr was a physical player for Sean Cluston down in Medicine Hat. Tume had over 130 minutes as a 20-year-old with the Seattle Thunderbirds. So, uh, you know, you take a look at it, and it's a situation where, you know, uh, the, the order rookies are right where they want to be right now. They're engaged. They're involved. They're in this game. They're crashing the net. They're taking the puck hard to the goal. And Alberta is being challenged with their undersized team in that area in the paint. And that's part of the reason we're at a 2-2 game. Connor Bunce has played well. Frankly, Curtis Muka hasn't been good enough. I mean, one of those goals is an old goal. The second one wasn't a very good one against either. And he's but, left some other pretty yeah, juicy there's rebounds the, out there. Again, if there was a little bit more skill in this Oilers rookie lineup right now, they might be up 3-2 three, uh, three, or 4-2. Looks like the Golden Bears will get a power play to start the second period. After all that, Darnell Nurse yeah. is going to pick up the extra two-minute minor. And 
I know you're a little surprised by what we've seen to this point, but it's certainly not the first time in the 23-year history of this rivalry that some hostilities well, have been exchanged between the Oilers rookies and the Golden Bears. Back in 1989, Richard Borgo, second-round draft choice for the uh, Oilers rookies, made the mistake of fighting Al, Al Tarasuk, who was a, a mean SOB uh, that played the International Hockey League before coming back to the U of A. Uh, Borgo got fed pretty badly, and Glenn Sather sat there and said, you know, our second-round pick just got beat up by a college boy. That doesn't look good. And, and then in 2002, the Oilers brought in Sean Let's Go Lego out of the uh, Old West Coast League, a league that uh, you sure. broadcast games in. And he, he picked a fight with Blair St. Martin, who had 366 penalty minutes in his 20-year-old year in Medicine Hat. And St. Martin was a do already in medical school at that time, and he could throw the left hands. And, and after that game, Kevin Lowe said, after St. Martin thoroughly demolished Legault, he said, it was a tough night for us. We lost the game 4-0, and your doctor punched out our tough guy. So there you have it through 20 minutes. Pretty entertaining hockey at Claire Drake Arena. The resumption of this game now in its 23rd year at the University of Alberta, the Edmonton Oilers. We are tied at two through 20 minutes of play, and again, looks like the Golden Bears will begin the second period on a power play. Reed Wilkins will be in next with your intermission report. Live from Edmonton's Claire Drake Arena, the Oilers rookies and the Golden Bears tied at two on your home of the Oilers, 6.30, Chad. Um, yeah, we're just delivering some uh, tickets to season ticket holders right now. It's, it's pretty cool to see, uh, uh, to actually get to come face to face with the people that um, come see our games every day. I've done it three or four times and it's uh It's 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 a lot of fun for us. I, I mean, to see uh, the expression of, of people's faces.
Burton and the Golden Bears will begin this second period of play on a power play. Darnell Nurse whistled for a double minor for roughing. Uh, just getting one was Travis Tume. So the Oilers will be down a man for the first time of the night. They went one for two on the power play. Greg Chase scored the power play goal. Then Brandon Batten got one for Edmonton to put the Oilers up two to one. But Sean Ringrose scored his second of the night with five minutes to play in an entertaining first period. 22 shots on goal combined and plenty of hitting and tempo all around. Claire Drake Arena tonight packed to its capacity of 3,009. Jack Michaels, Bob Stauffer with you, and here we go with period two and the Oilers shorthanded. Awanek just swept the face off right up the gut and making the save on it was Curtis Muka. And both goals probably Muka would like to have back. Sent in deep by the University of Alberta, and Tyler Buns will scoot over and fall on it. Bob? Here's where Alberta's experience playing together, their structure, their process, their ability to have set pieces off or set plays on the power play makes a difference against a team like the Oida Rookies where they're thrown together. And we'll see if they can make something happen. They like to basically get the puck back to the point. They're not a team that shoots a lot from the point. They try to pass it down low and create two-on-ones, but they like to drag the two forwards up high and create that low two-on-one down low. Oilers have taken command of both face-offs, however, on this Golden Bear power play, and that one swept length of the ice by Ben Betker, who's out there with Awanek Davidson defending the blue line, and now Ringrose, the man with both Golden Bear goals tonight, picks up on the left half boards. Out to Jesse Craig. Alberta in the green and gold, and the Oilers in the white with orange and blue. Rung off the post by Lazo on an interior pass. Karam directly to Ring Rose, and now Craig walks the line, gives it up, rally a shot, squeeze through, rebound loose, and somehow played to the corner by Bedker. He initially tried to tuck it underneath Buns' pads, and it caromed off those and right back to him. Now left circle, shot goal! Jordan Rowley puts it upstairs, and Tyler Buns beat cleanly over the right shoulder. It's 3-2 U of A. Time of the power play goal, 104. Jordan Rowley had 50 points a couple seasons ago for the Prince Albert Raiders in the WHL, a nine goal, 50 point season. He then broke his scaphoid bone in his uh, 20 year old year when he was captain of the PA Raiders. Basically took him half a year to recover. Uh, this is third year at Alberta and a tremendous power play goal for the Bears. Says to Craig, I believe, off the faceoff, Oilers will gather back behind their own net. Lazo will get credit for the assist. But Craig pretty obviously fed Rowley from one point to another, but we'll get a scoring clarification in a moment. In the meantime, here's Linda Mulder off the draw, taking a shot from the left point. That was blocked. Rebound to the far corner, and Marco Waugh will go off glass. Pitchfork down deep inside the Golden Bear blue line. Up the right-hand side, it's Barto Looking to the middle, taken out of the play completely was Dabrowski, and the Oilers move up the right-hand side. Here's Platzer. So the University of Alberta now leading for the second time tonight. Dabrowski, a little give and go with Ferguson. Puck came back to him. He was driven off it by Clefbaum and the clear back to center. Craig was drilled against the boards by Shaber and now nearly falling. Well, actually he did. Ferguson nearly falling and turning it over. And it winds up at center ice for Shaber. He'll dump it in and Craig back to get it for the University of Alberta Golden Bears. A 3-2 lead early in the second period. Four checking Oilers unable to hold the zone. Left bomb back to Gurnott up the right-hand side. 3-2 our score. Alberta led 1-0, fell behind 2-1, and now it's 3-2. A steal by Shaber. 2-1-1 on one for the Oilers. Shaber looking for Chase. Instead takes the shot himself, but it was blocked by the sliding Jesse Craig. Now it's Nickel on the puck for the Bears and eventually flipped out by Ferguson beyond the reach of Betker. Slid down to one knee, then recovered. Nickel took him hard against the boards. Bedker made the play to Davidson, and the Oilers break out three on two. Turned over to Carr. He probably gave it away at the Oilers blue line. Davidson to Bedker. Bedker at center for Cameron Abney. Left wing for Awanek. Rear shot, save Muka. Big rebound to the corner. U of A swing it against the boards. Carr angles his man off, and now it's Rachinsky. Back behind the net, 
Rally, who just scored the go-ahead goal, off to Lazo, and it's flung back to center. Oilers off to Awanek. He'll shovel it down low. Muka to knock it down one more time. He'll hand to Carr up the right-hand side. Awanek tried to close him off on the half wall. Eventually, it's knocked back to center. Clefbaum challenging. Putting the brakes on was Rally. He knew that Clefbaum was coming like a freight train. Ring Rose credited with three points tonight, two goals and an assist. And the Bears with a 3-2 lead. Here's Linda Mulder. Toppled nearly off balance, recovered, and then scampers his way up the left-hand side. Sent one fishtailing off the boards. Joey Leach back to get it for Edmonton. He's the only prospect that was originally drafted by another NHL team in rookie camp. He was a third-round pick of the Flames a few years back. Played at two prospects tournaments for Calgary and Penticton, this time representing the Oilers. Fight and collided with Ring Rose. Puck came free, and Gurnat will settle it down. The Gurnat at forward experiment has ended, and he's back on deep. Left bomb, right wing for Platzer to the middle. Marco Wall had a poke checked away. Again, in case you're just joining us, Andrew Miller, a late scratch, so 7-D tonight for the Oiler prospects. Lead pass left wing, and now Coper. Brings it over the line, dishes off. Chance coming for Redick. His wrister was redirected harmlessly against the end boards. Coper played it back to him. Hickmott sets up in the slot. No one on him for the time being, but Edmonton able to peel away with puck possession. Marincin again goes up the middle, getting a stick on that was Redick. Five minutes gone by in this second period. The Golden Bears power play goal have made it a 3-2 game. Hickmott and of course, Marincin collide there. The puck skitters inside the Edmonton blue line. Betker off the chase, turned over at the U of A blue line, and now Colin Joe ahead. Left wing, centering pass, turning Ferguson, firing save made Bunts. Rebound outside the circle, Shaber. Ferguson saw plenty of Bunts when those two would do battle in the Red Deer Medicine Hat games. Now Shaber in over the line, right wing for the Oilers, and he misses the net with a wrister. Clatters off the plexiglass, and the Bears funnel it back through the neutral zone. Settled down by Davidson, again wearing the captain's C tonight. Shots on goal tonight, 15-11 in favor of the Golden Bears, who lead it 3-2. Here's a steal for Torrey Dick, who has a pair of helpers tonight. Angled off by Davidson, and then gets hemmed in by Lazo. Centering pass comes through to Carr, didn't get a shot off. Wild shot taken by Lazo, blocked by Buns, and the rebound off to Bilkey, who clears, jamming it off the boards, too much mustard on it, and this will be automatic icing with six minutes having elapsed here in period two. Still 3-2 Bears. Alberta's power play there. I mean, that didn't take long to create that play for the Golden Bears. Jordan Raleigh ripping in and blasting one high pass Tyler Buns, and we're about three and a half minutes, four minutes away from seeing a change in goal for both of the clubs in tonight's game. Ty Rimmer for Edmonton and Luke Siemens for the University of Alberta. He's won 70 games the last two years of major juniors, so valuable addition for Ian Herber's club. Ian, of course, played himself in the NHL for the Oilers, one of 13 University of Alberta products to advance to the NHL, including Randy Gregg. Brent Severin's a guy who comes to mind. He could fight. Corey Cross spent a number of years in and around the NHL. Lead pass left wing, here's Awanek. Up through center, turned over to Linda Mulder, and he'll bank it off the boards back through center. 3-2 Bears here. Joey Leach off to Clefbaum. First time this game has been played since 2009. Linda Mulder with a sloppy turnover. Quick shot save made by Muka. What a chance for Ty Bilkey. And Bob, I, I was surprised there. He took an extra stride and almost yeah. skated right into the pads of Muka. I think somebody... That's what happens, I guess, when you've got six points and 297 minutes in your two years at Windsor. Somebody sold Ben Lindemolder on dropping the puck there in the middle zone breakout for the Golden Bears. Created a tremendous turnover. I mean, Lindemolder has such great lateral movement, and he's uh, shown what he can do in terms of his skating ability tonight, but that was an egregious giveaway oh. in his own zone. Off the faceoff, won by Ferguson. He and Joe chase it down and rifle it back through center. Here's Darnell Nurse back on the ice. Again, had to serve four minutes at the start of this period. U of A punch it back behind the Edmonton net. Nurse wearing the number 74, seventh overall selection out of suit. St. Marie Greyhounds. 41 points, 116 minutes a year ago. Platts are over the line, left wing, looking for Austin fighting, and the puck flipped back through the neutral zone by the Golden Bears. Nurse will haul it in, switch places with Gurnat, 
Strike it up the right-hand side for a deflection from Platzer, but he was not over center. So this will turn again into the automatic icing, and that's the automatic icing and the hybrid icing. The difference there, the puck, as soon as it crosses the goal line, boom, there's the whistle. Hybrid icing, you have to have someone back and in clear evidence of winning a race as they hit the face-off circle in pursuit of the puck. So that's the slight change from what we were witness to this past weekend in Penticton. Off the face-off win for Rachinsky, flipped wide by Tume, and then he blasts Platzer against the corner boards. Shaber comes away with puck possession for Edmonton, however, up the right-hand side, chipped to the middle. That's gonna be picked off by Drew Nickel on the back check. Up the right-hand side, here's Tume. Gained the zone, spun around by Marincin, floats it into the opposite corner, Nichols wide open. Centers, and Tume couldn't get a stick cleanly on that puck. Shaber to track it down, run into the boards by Tume. That creates a chance for Nickel, but his shot was deflected harmlessly to the corner by Petra. Now Rachinsky jumps into a scene. Loose left corner, he'll swing it around the boards, pitching in his car. Absorbed a couple of shots from Betker, gave it back to Rachinsky. Brett Rachinsky, until this past season, the all-time leader in Oil Kings games played. Cleared back to center. I think Foster now holds that distinction. Right side for Lazo in over the line. Right circle wrist shot. That's deflected over the net. Patrolled by Tyler Bunce. Loose left circle. Lazo given another chance. The fleet winger centers off the pads of Bunce, and it skips right to Petrick. And with 11 and a quarter to go in this first second period, he'll carry it to center. Turn it over there. Dick. Ring rose one timer. Score! Tyler Bonds had that one get past them on the blocker side. And it rolls over the goal line. And Sean Ringrose has a hat trick for the University of Alberta. Scored the game winner the last time this contest was played back in 2009. And tonight, he's got four points. And the Golden Bears take the first two goal lead of this hockey game at 4 to 2. 11 11. Make a wish. Ringrose did and it rolled in for him. And that is one that Tyler Buns definitely would like to have back. You know I'm a big believer in Tyler Buns, but that's just an ugly goal against. Off the face off at center. Here's Cameron. Well, they're having a tough night with the goal calls, aren't they? Yeah, I'm really trying to ignore the goals and assists announcement. Off the draw, down low, quick wrist shot right circle and a save made by Muka. Here's Joey Leach down low left corner. He'll toss off the glass. Mentioned that earlier on the Craig assist to rally on the University of Alberta Golden Bear go-ahead goal. Here in this second period, two for the Bears. Punch back behind the Oiler net by the home team, the U of A, and now left corner, a chance for Reddick. Saucer pass across, handled by Craig down low. Here's Hickmont. He's been quiet thus far, and his entry pass into the slot broken up by Austin Fight. That whole line's been quiet. Colin Joe back up the right-hand side. I think Coper has had his moments, and now we've got too many men. Coper is the one guy on that line that I think has had his moments yep. tonight, and I think they're gonna not hesitate here. 10.06 to go, second period. Here comes Ty Rimmer and Tyler Bunza's night is complete, stopping 13 of 17 shots on net in 29 minutes and 54 seconds of work. And again, he got off to a promising start, but that last goal will eat away at him. Meanwhile, Muka remains in for the time being. The penalty, by the way, will be against, or will be served by Dabrowski. So Buns ends up making 13 saves. And I, I thought they had more shots on goal than that. Uh, often Alberta's been accused here in this building, Steve Knowles, who used to work for the Oilers and a long time uh, employee here at the Golden Bear Games has been accused, some coaches would say, of inflating Alberta's shot totals. He uh, made some decent saves tonight, Bob, but yeah. he's got to get rid of that bad goal. Uh, and that's, you know, he just... And I'm talking about his second year, right. likely in Bakersfield or, or wherever well, he ends up. You know, and he's a guy. He's a guy that when you took a look at his career in Medicine Hat, the first year he only had a .886 save percentage, and that was the same percentage that he had in the East Coast League. And, you know, I, I thought a year ago that Tyler Buns going into Oilers camp was ahead of Olivier Waugh. And it was pretty apparent very quickly that Olivier Waugh 
was the better of the two goaltenders down in Stockton at the East Coast League as they're warming up. Ty Rimmer. And why don't we take a quick 30 second break sure. while they warm up the net monitor. We'll be right back with continual second period action. It's the U of A four, Edmonton two, back in 30 seconds. around I'm wondering whether Ian Herber is elected not to make the goaltending change with the others poised to go on the power play it would have been tough sledding for Luke Siemens to come in and immediately face a power play fired in by Brandon Davidson Buns is gone and replaced by Ty Rimmer who was 24 and 30 and 10 last year for Lethbridge here's Darnell Nurse left circle Waugh skates by it lets it go through to fighting and now Platzer Oilers on the short end of a 4-2 score. Jack Michaels, Bob Stauber with him. Claire Draker in on the campus of the University of Alberta, where for the first time in four years, the Oiler rookies meet the Golden Bears. Here's Nurse, left circle. Backdoor play broken up by Rowley, who scored the go-ahead goal earlier in this period. Davidson winding, dishing. Platzer, left side of the net. Tried to center, that was deflected by Carr off the side of the cage, grabbed by Marco Walls. Tied at two after one. Golden Bears have struck twice. Here in this, the second period, including on the power play, a blast by Nurse sails wide. Rebound Davidson. Fighting can't get there. Platzer will pinching in left corner. 40 seconds left in the man advantage. Eight and three quarter minutes left here in the second period. It's Waugh, comes out in front, back door to Platzer. And he didn't handle it cleanly. That pass was to the left skate. If it was on the right skate, it's probably in the net. Different looking order rookie power play. They're not dragging their playmaker back to a high point. Instead, they're just having a two minute the point and then three guys down low. Hedrick drives in from the left-hand side. Bears unable to clear. Kleppbaum knocked it down and scored. Oscar Kleppbaum with a great job of knocking it down. And then he got it on net where it may have been deflected home by Patrick. It was deflected by Reed Patrick, but Oscar Kleppbaum makes the point. That's going to uh, change. Not the type of way that Curtis Muka wants to leave the Alberta goal and see Luke Siemens go in, but it'll be a power play marker. And Clefbaum, with great hand-eye coordination at the left point, knocks it down and then get. He doesn't need much of a backswing to get a lot on the, the uh, shot, and he got her through. And Patrick was in the right place at the right time, and we got ourselves a one-goal game. So Muka's night is done. He stops 10 of 13 in 31 minutes and 38 seconds of work. And not much he could do about that one as Petrick comes in front. Clefbaum, the great hand-eye to just create a chance in the first place. And then drove it toward the net where it was tipped home. So Ty Rimmer getting a look. 9-12 save percentage last year for the Hurricanes. And now the Golden Bears flash into the offensive zone off the center ice draw. 4-3 our score. Wide open, ring rose in front and hide by Rimmer, got it with a glove, and what a chance for Ringrose to score his fourth, and perhaps collect his fifth point, although I'm not sure about that one. Gernot drives in with a left wing slapper that caught the outside of the post and skitters all the way back into the Euler end. 4-3, U of A, Golden Bears with a 19-13 edge on the shot clock, including 7-3 in this, the second period. Oilers within a goal once more now after scoring for the second time in three power play opportunities coming into tonight. This group of Oiler rookies had gone one of 16 in Penticton. So they've clicked tonight, getting to the net and tipping one home. Reed Petrick his first game as an Oiler rookie. And now a steal from Cameron Abney. Brought up ice by Cruz Reddick. In over the line, left to right. Turns, gives. Hickmont, fans, gets a shot off and a save made by Rimmer, who holds his ground, and now the Oilers will toss the Golden Bears out of there, and some sticks up pretty high, as there's a wrestling match going on with Hickmott and Brandon Baddock. Baddock and Oil King, and Hickmott, 
and Oil King as well. Had a big year for Edmonton, actually, a couple years back. Jordan Hickmott, 28 goals and 66 points back in 2011. I think the boys in the Oil Kings Alumni Association might be having a little bit of conversation there. Brandon Baddock trying to make an impact and going after Hickmott. It's one of the few times Hickmott, Coper, and Reddick, in my mind, have been a really effective five on five. It's been a dominating performance from Sean Ringrose. He has three, and getting the glove was Rimmer, but it also hit the bar. Got both, and uh, what a night so far for the line of Lazo, Dick, and Ringrose. They've been all over it for the Golden Bears, and a good night for the what a rookie power play tonight with a couple goals. Seven minutes to play, second period. Our score is 4 3 in favor of the U of A. And off the draw, Marincin will chase it down in the corner, look for Bilkey, and the Oilers break out right to left. They're in the white, Alberta in the green. Spill deep into the offensive zone. Here's Carr looking to clear for the Bears. Can't do it. Cameron Abnett will hesitate. Back to Joey Leach. Cross ice for Nurse. Walks the line. Open high slot. Nurse fires. Save made by Siemens. Again, a guy who's gone 70 and 35 the last two years in the Western Hockey League. Moose Jaw and Prince Albert. Driving in is Drew Nickel. Sent down low, far corner, centering pass stolen away by Bilkey. And a soft chip out to center ice. Here's Nurse activating one on two. But then the defenseman ran into an errant stick lying on the ice, and it turns into a chance the other way for the Bears. But Crooks with a poor drop pass, and the Oilers are able to break that up. And here's fighting, almost crashing into his own man, Platzer. That, in turn, gives the Bears a two-on-two two coming the other way. Ferguson, cross-ice floater, knocked down and shot toward the net by Bardo, and that was blocked and cleared by the Oilers up through center. Sent flying off balance, was fighting, but he did manage to work at the full 200. Ian Barto hemmed in the corner, did manage to muscle it back to center. Crooks after it. So was Platzer for the Oilers, rolls it free in front of the Edmonton bench. Linda Mulder tried to chip it inside the Oiler blue line, only to have it come back to him inside his own blue line. At center ice, a collision between Davidson and Tume ends up with the puck deep in the offensive zone for the Bears. Now Torrey Dick runs into an Oilers sandwich of Platzer and Clefbaum, and Petrick, meanwhile, who just scored for Edmonton, drives down the left-hand side. Three Bears collapse on him. Force a turnover, and now it's Ringrose hustling over the blue line. Sean Ringrose made a living in this Oiler rookie game. Again, the game winner the last time it was played in 2009. The Bears have won seven of the last nine, although the teams have split the last four matchups between 06 and 09. Here's a chip ahead for Petrick. In over the line, top of the left circle, shoots one wide. He was almost looking for a redirect from Shaber, but he was tied up in front with Reddick. Now Shaber's got it back, out to Marincin. Marty Gernat's open, lets a shot fly, double deflection, and it winds up in the corner for Petrick. Four and a half to go, second period. Still a 4-3 game in favor of the Golden Bears, who have led on two separate occasions after the Oilers took a 2-1 lead midway through the first. Here's Levko Koper taking an outlet pass at center. Races across the line, puts the brakes on, hands off to Dabrowski. And Dabrowski had it swatted away. Carr got a shot on net. And that was tipped over by Cobra, who flashed in front of goaltender Ty Rimmer to try to create a screen. Now Gernot, right up the middle for Abney, hops off his stick and is tossed back in by Crooks. Less than four to go, second period. Shots are 21-14 in favor of the Bears. 9-4 in this second period. The chance up the left-hand side for Travis Awanek, stymied by Carr, and now the Bears Tuck it back inside the Edmonton blue line. Loose at center, Awanek a big hit on Jamie Crooks. Over skating the play was Hickmont. Has not been his night just yet. Bob, you've got some pull around there. Will you tell that bear to move a little bit? Those sound effects are really going. That's the president <laughs> of the Jock Michaels fan club down there right now. Here's Travis Awanek directly behind the net. Off to Marinchik. And now Marinchik looked at Awanek, gave it to fight, and now he'll go to Awanek at center ice. Drives in for the right-hand side. Austin fight, losing at top of the circles. Puck rolls free for a moment, and the Bears are able to clear back towards center. Leach quickly flips it over to Davidson. Davidson fires it in. Bartow directly behind the U of A net, and the Bears regrouping here with 2.50 on the game clock. Second period, 4-3 U of A. Ringrose with a hat trick tonight for the U of A. 
Oiler goals have been scored, and now we're going to have a deflection as the puck is sent out of play. 2.41 to go in the second period. Oiler goals, Chase, Baddock, and here in the second period, Petrick. We haven't seen a lot of Chase. He's just out there right now. But Reed Petrick has been, I think he's helped out this Oiler rookie squad. He's given him a little bit of skill. And it's funny, Bob Green mentioned the fact that they would miss him. He's an Edmontonian, born and raised. Wins the faceoff. Oilers go D to D. Joey Leach from center ice fires it in. Loose on the right half boards. Chase whiffed as he tried to center. Coming over to close out on it was Rachinski. Loose in the far corner. Hunting after it is Jesse Craig. Rachinski out muscled for the puck by Chase Shaber. Look to the interior. Shaber getting worked over, and Rachinski has him stapled against the far half wall. And now Drew Nickel finally pounces on a loose puck and rolls it ahead for two men. Trying to get around Joey Leach. Pitchforked into the corner by the alert goalie stick of Rimmer, and now it's Petrick behind his own net, puts it up the middle, Chase couldn't get there, and the Bears will keep it deep in the offensive zone here as we come up on a minute 50 to play in this second period. Still 4-3 U of A. Turned over by Edmonton as the Oilers hit the U of A blue line. Carr, Rowley, and the outlet completed to Hickmont. He'll race in from the right-hand side, checked by Baddock. Coper fell down, and now it winds up on the near half boards, taken by Awanek of Edmonton. Ty Bilkey trying to squeeze through Rally, unsuccessful in that endeavor, and Carr comes over to make a play on the puck, but lost the handle. Bears regain puck possession, and Hickmont with a clear back towards center. Baddock defending, forces a bad pass that's picked off by Nurse, but his launch is too far, and again, with that hybrid acing not in effect, the automatic icing kicks in, because Bilkey was ahead of the field, so in Penticton over the weekend, that would have been an oiler puck in the offensive zone. Here it's automatic ice. Minute 15 left in the second period. One goal game, the Bears in front. Huge faceoff for Travis Awanek, and he's going to make his hay at the next level in the faceoff circle and being a defensive-minded two-way center against Sean Ringrose. Bears are very good off of uh, set pieces if they win the draw. Ringrose does win the draw. Bartow cross ice. Open man for a moment was Carr. Gives it up for Lazo. Now Linda Mulder called it for the puck. Shot to the point, just redirected wide by Tory Dick, who's had a couple of assists tonight already. Oscar Kleffbaum on the puck, reaches the red line, and floats it behind the U of A net. Now patrolled by Luke Siemens. 50 seconds to go in the period, and the Bears break out left to right. Bartow has some open ice, in over the line. Right-handed shot, and he whistled it right to the glove of Ty Rimmer. That was a high riser, ticketed for just underneath the bar and Rimmer made the save with 44.6 to go on the second period clock, 4-3 Bears. And Ian Barto can shoot the puck. It was a good save by Rimmer. Frankly, Rimmer has looked more settled, I think, than Tyler Buns did. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of work, obviously, with Siemens. In Buns goal. was okay early, I thought, yeah. Bob, and then it kind of got away the from fourth him. one. Yeah, no, that's, that's one that he's going to have to clean up, and this is second year as a pro. And it's one, quite frankly, he told me, Bob, yeah. that he would continually let bother of him, and then, you know, a 3-2 game turns into 6-2, and your numbers look as ugly as his did down in Stockton. Despite the fact that he had a winning record. Off the faceoff. A lot of run support. Rolled back behind the net. Edmonton left-hand side. Here's Marco Waugh. Right side for Platzer, right circle. Centering pass broken up, and it's tossed to the far corner. Colin Joe will collect for the Bears, swing it over, and Dabrowski couldn't do much with it. Here's Waugh back into the offensive zone for Platzer. Waugh out-muscled by the Bears, and now scampering back to center is Ferguson. Goes down to one knee, gives it up for Crooks, and U of A... Get it in deep as time expires here in the second period. Again, we've got a bit of a collision along the end boards. And again, there's going to be some pushing and shoving. This time, Brent Ferguson is involved. I think that might be Kyle Platzer it as well. It is Platzer. Marco Waugh got this started. And Austin Fighton has finally elected to get engaged in this, the fourth game of the rookie tournament. I would have To live up to his surname? Yeah, I would have liked to have seen this a little bit more out of Austin when each team had two or three designated guys that were willing to do this uh, in Penticton. But in that situation, Brett Ferguson was upset, Jack. Brett Ferguson, a guy who had a 23-goal, 61-point season as a 20-year-old playing with Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Ridger. He was upset that Marco Waugh got away with a two-hander coming up the ice. He was appealing for a call. He didn't get one. 
And I think Ferguson showed a little bit of uh, antagonism towards the end of the play and ended up basically making that melee happen. And then Fighting came into the defense of Platzer, who's been one of the better offensive players for the uh, uh, for the Oida rookies through the course of these four games. And Platzer's a guy who also isn't afraid to get engaged. I mean, there have been some moments for the Edmonton Oilers forwards throughout this rookie camp. I mean, should they be unable to rally tonight, they're going to come away with an 0-4 record. But there have been guys who've shown us something, and Reed Patrick, as you duly noted, yeah. in that second period, has offered up something tonight. Well, Bob Green knows Reed Patrick. Obviously, Bob Green, the former general manager of the Edmonton Oil Kings, and, and Bob Green thought, I mean, Patrick had basically, on average, 15 goals here for his last 18, 19, 20-year-old year. He has a little bit of offense. He's not bad in the face-off circle. He can play a two-way game. Uh, I, I think there was a thought that he'd be a better offensive player junior than he turned out to be. But Bob Green specifically stated, he said, they're going to miss Reed Patrick in, in Penticton. He was a depth guy that could at least make some plays and give them a little bit of offense generated off the cycle and that sort of thing. And Patrick was the right guy in the right place at the right time and that deflection by Clefbaum. And, and Oscar Clefbaum, this oh. has been his best game. What a play he yeah, made. I mean, great hand-eye coordination at the left point to knock it down, and then he wires one to the net. One of the things that's interesting in this matchup tonight, Jack, is you have the... Uh, the Alberta Golden Bears with five of their six defensemen right-hand shots. And Edmonton on the other side of it. They've got seven yeah. left-hand shooting defensemen in the lineup tonight yeah. playing that extra D uh, with Miller out. So I, I don't think the Oiter Brass is going to be at all disappointed with what they've seen. Uh, you don't have Jajar Carey. You don't have Andrew Miller. There are two of your four best offensive players that we saw in Penticton. The Oiter rookies are right there. Yeah, the shots are 21-14. Alberta kind of had a little bit of an advantage in that second period. There's been a lucky goal for each of the two teams. Uh, the first goal against Muka was an awful goal. The fourth goal uh, against Tatter Buns was a terrible goal as well. This is a one-goal game, and, you know, we should have a heck of a third period. Looking forward to it. Again, the resumption of a rivalry that went 22 years untouched. U of A with a 12-ton lead in that series. Winners of seven of nine, and then a four-year interruptus, if you will, and only three Golden Bears plus Curtis Muka had played in this game, and now it's back, and I'm glad it's back. It's been a beauty tonight at Claire Drake Arena, and with 20 minutes to play, the U of A with a 4-3 lead over the Oilers rookies. Bob Stoffer, Jack Michaels, we're live at Claire Drake, and Reed Wilkins is in next. This rookie game can be heard only on your home of the Edmonton Oilers. 6.30, Chad.
On the campus of the University of Alberta, Claire Drake Arena for the resumption of this series between the Oilers prospects and the Golden Bears. 13-time national champions in CIS, including 10 consecutive appearances at the national finals, winning five. And the Edmonton Oilers rookies who've acquitted themselves quite well after a tough weekend in Penticton where they went 0-3 and were outscored by a combined 17-6. They're right in this one. The Golden Bears with a 4-3 lead heading to the final period thanks to a hat trick and an assist from Sean Ringrose, their leading scorer from two years ago, and certainly one of the top players on a team that returns 10 scores from last year's 38-7 team that came at an eyelash of winning a national championship. They're expected to be on the short list of favorites this year and will begin this third and final period skating five on five. The shots on goal in the second period, nine for the U of A and five for the Oilers. Two period totals of 21-15 in favor of the Golden Bears. We're set and it's Marco Waugh lining up for a face off against Ringrose who's had a huge night. Dick and Lazo have been his sidecars throughout. Lazo with four assists credited, and Tory Dick with a playmaker with three. And they've clearly been Alberta's best line. That goes without saying. I mean, they've been all over the puck. I've been a little bit disappointed with Hickmont's performance up front, uh, along with Levko Koper and Cruz Reddick. They've been quiet. Do want to mention that uh, we see Darnell Nurse on the ice. Marco Wall also. Uh, those were the first two draft choices for the Edmonton Oilers in this past year's draft. Ryan Jankowski is here from Hockey Canada. He was in Calgary last night watching the Flames rookies against the UFC Dinos, and he is looking in his role as a scout for Hockey Canada at uh, Darnell Nurse, who is definitely on the radar screen, and Marco Waugh as well. Marco Waugh prepares to take the face off. Chase Baddock and Petrick with the goals tonight for the Edmonton Oiler prospects. And again, three for Ringrose and an assist on the rally goal. As it was 2-2 after one, U of A made it 4-2. Now it's back to 4-3 as the Golden Bears moving right to left, drop it deep into the Oilers zone. Just to finish a thought on that Hickmott, Reddick, Coper line. In my mind, Hickmott and Reddick have kind of dragged down Levko Coper a little bit. I, I like the way his feet have been moving. He hasn't got much help from his line mates, though. Here's Darnell Nurse into the offensive zone, and Davidson muffs one. He was wide open, a strider two inside the blue line, and he'll have to come back and collect the puck. Again, in net for the Oilers. Right now, Ty Rimmer in relief of Tyler Buns, who stopped 13 of 17 in nearly 30 minutes of work, and Curtis Muka on the bench for the U of A after stopping 10 of 13 in nearly 32 minutes of work. So it's Luke Siemens entrusted with protecting this current 4-3 lead. Davidson taking an awful lot of time behind his own net. Up to 10 seconds now, two Bears collapse on him. He throws one up the middle for Platzer. Reaches center, driven hard off the puck by Cruz Reddick, and now Schaber pushes it ahead for Petrick. One on four, and he's erased in the corner for Bartow. Tries to tug that puck free and does so. And here come the Golden Bears on a breakout. And tripping over his own blue line was Hickmont. Kind of a summation of his nut, don't you think, Bob? He's been awful. Back to the point. Wild drive taken by Linda Mulder. And that'll sail off the end boards collected by Shaver. Ducks around a hit from Hickmont, who again tumbles to the ice surface. And now Darnell Nurse escapes from behind his own net. Darts up the left-hand side. Little head and shoulder fake on Hickmont and then he'll wind it hard around the end board. It's gonna be grabbed by Crooks. He'll advance as far as center, and then it's bashed back in by Marty Marincin. Greg Chase will chase down a loose buck, hand off to Baddock with a goal tonight already. Center is on a quick one-timer by Awanek. Is flicked aside by Siemens. Bears break out. Up to center is Bartow. Hits the red line and dumps it in. Ferguson left corner. Bartow, Ring Rose, Colin Joe. Looking to go 2 0 against the Oiler rookies and their eligibility here at the U of A. They're both in their fifth year. Thrown toward the net, and that was batted down in front of Rimmer and cleared by the Oilers up the right hand glass. Quickly advanced the other way. Tume bursts in, pushes a wrist shot wide from the left circle. Rebound out to Thomas Kong. Funnels it down low. Only to have a Wanick toss it off the glass. Not out. Baddock lost the puck battle, but Abney was there in support and was able to rub it back to center. 
Now it's Rowley up the middle. That was tipped away. Joey Leach will haul it in. Pressured by Rachinsky, scoots away, and then fires one up the left-hand boards. Carr back to get it, and Austin fighting is going to make life difficult for him. Grounds him into the far corner. Rachinsky had it in his feet, found it, and now puts the brakes on and tries to reverse against fight. Ultimately leaves it in the corner, and the Bears are able to strike it up the left-hand side. Icing will be waved off. Again, it's automatic tonight, which is the CIS rule. And here's Martin Gurnett behind his own net, right wing. Delivery to Platzer. Cross ice left wing to Wall. Back to Platzer, a shot. Not much on it. Stick save made by Siemens. Rebound of the corner, and Dick could not find it. Gurnett did. Pushes it down low. Platzer and Wall go to work. Here's Wall coming off the left half boards. Feeds Clefbaum. Wrist shot sails Wall. Rebound taken by Gurnett with 16 and a quarter to play in regulation. If we do need overtime, we'll go straight to three on three for five minutes. Up the right-hand side, Colin Joe. Oilers at this point would take OT. They're down 4-3. Bears push one to the middle. Shot was blocked. Coper in support, top of the left circle. Petrick runs them off the puck, winding up in the corner. Clefbaum using that body all of a sudden to take Ringrose out of the play. And that's where Clefbaum has made strides, Bob. It's now his third game in almost a year, and he's starting to feel some confidence physically. He's getting more comfortable with the size of the ice surface, and he really gets the puck away quickly from the point. Redick ahead to Coper, who takes a shot that's deflected high. He'll stay within the ice surface, clubbing off the glass, and then a quick shot fired wide. Good release that time from Torrey Dick. Here's Linda Mulder trying to get it on net. That was broken up. And now Coper directly behind the net. Looks for a teammate, and it's stolen away by Darnell Nurse, and the Oilers are going to break out and move up ice left to right. Nurse can really fly. Makes a move to his right. Makes another move out wide. Centers, and that was redirected just wide. In support was Jay Shaver, but Darnell Nurse, by his lonesome, creating a chance. Here's Greg Chase heading for the net. Centers, and that hopped over the stick of Brandon Davidson, and I'm not sure Awanek didn't get a piece of that, and it might have actually caught Davidson off guard. Linda Mulder with a burst up the right-hand side for Crooks. Over the line, wrist shot high to the glove, but wide. Rebound went right back to Crooks, who was raced in the corner by Marinchin of the Oiler Prospects, who trail 4-3, 14-40 to go in regulation. Shaber a high toss off the backhand side, picked off by Drew Nickel of the U of A. Threw it to the middle, and unable to get there was Ferguson. Kept it alive for a moment, did Brett Ferguson, and he'll steer it down low. Dabrowski and Nickel in pursuit, and Dabrowski's had enough. He's coming off on a change. Marinchin up the left-hand side to Awanek for the Oilers, and Awanek rifles it around the boards. Ty Bilkey in puck support, right corner, crowded, and a race there. Up the right-hand side, and a bouncing puck set head for Nickel. It's a breakaway. Nickel shoots and missed the net. Came off the glass. Directly to Ben Betker. Good chance that time, and the Oilers unable to do much with it. Up the right-hand side, Edmonton on a reset. Here's Betker, floats one off the glass, back to center. Immediately tapped back in by Thomas Carr. And the Oilers forced to chase it down in their own end. Cleft bomb, and Marco Wall offering token support, then back behind the net for Betker. U of A continues to pressure. Bob, you're right. The Bears love that attacking forecheck. They're relentless, and the Oilers have trouble getting it out of the zone again. Here's Lazo keeping it in, this time for Ringrose against Marco Wall. Now Clefbaum comes down low, nearly turned it over, back behind the net, throwing it in front, and that's picked off, and Baddock brings it the other way up the right-hand side, and now the puck inadvertently tossed out of play, and that's part of the college-slash-university game. You're used to gearing up all week for Friday and Saturday night and then going pell-mell for 120 minutes. But you have a four to two practice to game ratio and you gotta build and usually what happens is you work on special teams on a Wednesday and then really give her on a Thursday as you gear for that Friday and Saturday night game. And uh, you know, the Bears played fr uh, Friday and Saturday in Banff against the University of Calgary, had Sunday off and skated yesterday. One, four, two and three nothing. Earlier a triumph over Augustana University. And so the Bears carry a three and oh mark into this game. We got a penalty coming up. Penalty coming against the Oiler prospects. I think it's against the Bears. I think it's against Cruz Siemens Reddick. was coming off, and now yeah. he hustles back in. You're right, Bob. Reach infraction for Cruz Reddick. So the Oilers' power play has been very good in this game. They got a couple 
power play goals. Reddick doesn't look very pleased with the call. Cruz Reddick, an interesting story. Ranked 15th in the midterm report by Central Scouting as an 18-year-old, a year that he ended up getting 74 points for Bob Torrey's Tri-City Americans. Never got drafted that year. Had three 20-goal campaigns for Tri-City. Skilled offensive playmaking centerman at this level. Now uh, his third year at the U of A. Off the faceoff, bouncing puck going to be corralled and cleared by Levko Koper. Backhands it up the right-hand side. Ian Herbers <laughs> was yelling at Luke Siemens, get back there as he comes off, thinking the pass. Oh, here's a lead pass and a breakaway for fighting. Richard save by Siemens. And he keeps it a 4-3 game. The Oilers with a 100-foot pass right up the middle. And Austin fight with a chance to tie the game was denied. That was Gurnett with an absolute beauty. Darnell Nurse nearly gave it away, then stayed strong on the puck and extracted it from Levko Koper back in his own zone. And now Marco Wall with a chip ahead intended for Klepon, broken up. Oh, another bad giveaway, this time by Carr Rich shot and a save made by goaltender Luke Siemens. And the puck hustled up the right-hand side, but Linda Mulder in the second period, and that time Carr inexplicably just tossing it into the slot, and the Oilers with a pretty good scoring chance. Here's Petrick, lead pass left wing, too far for Greg Chase. Jesse Craig comes over to hustle and kick it up the right-hand side, and now Colin Joe using his speed to get around Marinchin and melt away some key clock here. Down to 40 seconds left on the power play. And Joe's speed right there, Bob, costs the Oilers about 10 seconds on the man advantage. He can skate. He's a defenseman that uh, probably underperformed statistically on offense in a WHL career with Kelowna and Saskatoon. Marinchin to Davidson, left to right in over the line. Now Greg Chase heads for the net. Wrist shot, deflected wide. Rebound, skips off the corner boards, played by Petrick out near the point. Marinchin had his shot blocked, and then it was inadvertently swatted out of play. He's trying to get it length of the ice was Barto, and he wrung it off an Oilers stick. Now, was that Nurse or was that Gurnat with that long stretch right up the middle? But I'll tell you, that was a little bit of coaching. And, you know, Bill Morris is in that director of coaching role now for the Oilers organization. And he's, Ian Herbers is one of his protégés, and you don't think he didn't do some work there of Todd Nelson knowing what the uh, Golden Bears PK would look out? Great stretch pass on the play. Off the faceoff, it sent length of the ice, and once again, the Oilers will have to regroup. Martin Gurnat up the right-hand side, and that's going to do it for the Oilers' power play. So Edmonton two out of four tonight with a man advantage, still trailing 4-3. Nearly 11 minutes still left to play in regulation, and the Oilers in search of the equalizer. U of A led early. Oilers came back for a 2-1 advantage. Golden Bears tied it before the end of the first period. Eventually took a 4-2 lead. Oilers got one back late in the second to make it 4-3. Shot from the high slot by Ian Barteau did not get through, and it's sent up the left-hand side by Bilkey. Reversed quickly by Linda Mulder, and the Oilers will settle it down back in their own end. Gurnad advances to Bilkey. He took a hard shot from Barteau, and chasing it down one more time for the Golden Bears will be Linda Mulder, and he can fly up the left-hand side. Tended for Torrey Dick. He's got it in over the line. Wrist shot right in the chest of Ty Rimmer, who makes the save and then a late little shot given on Lazo by Darnell Nurse. In the mix, again, Sean Ringrose with three goals and an assist in tonight's game, and that is the difference right now. It's 4-3 U of A with 9.54 to play. Yeah, I think that Ian Herber is the Alberta Golden Bears coach to be looking for a little bit more scoring distribution. I mean, he basically had seven forwards last year that were in and around a point per, per game for the majority of the season, but tonight it's been the one line, and for the Oiler rookies, it's guys finding a way. And that's part of the reason why they're in this game. Off the draw, back to the point, and a shot taken, not much on it from Carr, deflected back behind the net. Here's a wraparound Lazo, and he was unable to jam it past Rimmer, who jabbed that right skate against the post and held his ground in the blue paint to protect the 4-3 lead. Just have a feeling, the way it's going with Lazo, Dick, and Ringrose, that uh, Ringrose may have another in him. How about the story of Tory Dick? He was the ACAC, that's the college level scoring leader, a couple seasons ago. He Op played at Augustana. Right, right. Uh, Open tryouts at the U of A and worked his way onto the team. 
Off the draw, high slot. Here's a shot by Colin Joe. Yeah, he started in the Saskatchewan Junior League. Yep. Worked his way to Augustana and then onto the U of A roster. And he's had a big night tonight with a playmaker, three assists. Dump in by U of A. Here's Betker back behind the net. And Darnell Nurse up the left side. Austin fight. He was robbed on a breakaway chance that would have tied this game earlier in this period. Big save by Siemens, and now Dabrowski looking to pad the Alberta lead. It's 4-3. Crowded is Jesse Craig down low right corner. He'll bank it off the wall to Ferguson for a slapper. That was blocked in front. Nickel tipped it toward the net and able to get on top of it was Rimmer as there's a bit of a dog pile right in the Edmonton crease area with nine minutes remaining in this third period. Oilers have mustered just two shots in this third period. Golden Bears have only got three. But Edmonton's still team trailing. Yeah. And so they're going to have to find a push. U of A, you noted it early in the hockey game, and I think the Golden Bears have maintained their energy. They have been relentless on the forecheck and have had well, success Well, this line in particular disrupting. that's going on the ice right now, Dick, Ringrose, and Lazo have had a great game. Here's Ringrose against Reed Petrick. Face off to the right of Rimmer. Exactly nine minutes remaining. Face off win for the Golden Bears. Linda Mulder pulls the puck back behind the net. Looks for a teammate in front. Linda Mulder tried to go back door and that was broken up. Anticipated by Clefbaum. And the man wearing one of the A's for the Oilers tonight got his stick on it. Ultimately cleared out near the blue line but held in by the Golden Bears. Davidson did not get it out. He'll get a second crack at it. Off the glass and this time successfully done. Whacked away by Shaber from Bartow, but there to fill the lane was Lazo. He finds the puck. Alberta with another turnover on its own end, this time by Dick. Here's Petrick with a centering pass back door, but not having a stick down with Shaber. Fed along the boards, back behind the net by Clefbaum to Shaber. Out to Davidson, and he bobbled. Davidson has to curl back to center to make a play on it. Shaber, rink wide to Greg Chase. He'll shovel it down low, and Edmonton will change with eight minutes left in the hockey game. First time since 2009, the Oilers rookies collide with the Golden Bears. U of A won that game. Game winner scored by Sean Ringrose, and then they did not play the game from 2010 through 2012. It's back at it this year. Here's Brandon Baddock behind his own net for the Oilers. U of A getting it in deep here, protecting the one goal lead. Baddock has one of the Oilers goals tonight. Here he turns it over. Chance for Reddick. Save made on a hard wrist shot from the right circle by goaltender Ty Rimmer. And the Oilers will bring it the other way. Marin Chip chips and chases it down himself. Centers and having trouble was Carr, but he did manage to poke it to the far corner. Around the boards to Gurnat. He'll go cross ice for the Oilers to Awanek. Sifts a backhander wide. Baddock will chase it down left corner and crowded immediately by Rowley. Golden Bears have the puck behind their own net. Carr jittery for a moment. Then recovered composure and found Coper up to center, and he'll just dump it in. U of A will change on the fly. Seven minutes remaining. Martin Gurnett directly behind his own net. Oilers trying to avoid an 0-4 rookie camp. Brett Rachinski closing out at the blue line. Shot from the point comes in. Sent wide by Bilkey. Waugh in pursuit of the rebound. Oilers hem the Bears in their zone. Nurse outreach for the puck, however, by Jesse Craig, and here comes the U of A. They're going to be offside here. Recognizing that was Rachinsky. He'll back off and just dump it in. Now Nickel and Tume come flying in the zone. Rachinsky with a steal left corner. The Oilers again having trouble clearing the zone, Bob. Rachinsky now working the end wall. Wall, relentless pressure. Wraparound effort by Rachinsky and a save made by Rimmer. But Rachinsky has his own rebound. Banked it off the back of the net to himself. Then out to the point. Hesitating. Jesse Craig just slides it along the boards. Nurse anticipated the carom, picked it off, and cleared up the gut. Six minutes to play. U of A four, Edmonton three. There's been no scoring in this third period. Puck punched up the left-hand boards. Betker back to get it for the Oilers. Up the left-hand side. Intercepted there by Ian Bartow. The veteran defenseman put one in front. Glanced off a skate. Karam handled by Chase Shaver, and here comes Petrick. Driving toward the net. Petrick short side, and just missed. Rebound comes around the boards. Bartow with one hand able to poke it free, and Coper will try to get around Betker. He will. 
Closing off was Kleppbaum and Coper collided. Quick shot and a glove save made by goaltender Ty Rimmer. Kleppbaum up slowly, shaken up as I think he inadvertently collided with Coper's elbow. Coper's got it left circle, cross ice to no one in particular as the Bears change on the fly here. Ferguson out to Johnny Lazo. Still the U of A with a one goal lead and now five minutes remaining here at Claire Drake Arena, packed to its capacity of two or 3,009. Turned over by Greg Chase, out to the point. Rowley a left wing shot and a save made by Rimmer. Rebound loose, top of the circle. Kicked out to Torrey Dick. Couldn't get it cleanly on his forehand. Now Lazo, deep left corner. Looking for a teammate, shooting off the crossbar. Rebound hops directly to Carr. And the U of A really keeping the Oilers bottled in their own end. Time melting away, Lazo hits him in. Streaking in front, that's Ring Rose with three goals and an assist. Couldn't make a play there. Clefbaum desperately needs a clear. Rowley tries to hold the zone, does momentarily. Dick, however, ran in to Clefbaum, and the puck is loose right at the blue line. Oilers trying to force it out. Greg Chase hammering away on Lazo, but the U of A stays strong. Here's Dick inside to Ring Rose, and he got clubbed from behind by Baddock, and now Chase really giving Ring Rose the business, and now I think Greg Chase might have taken it one step too far. Has Ring Rose drawn a penalty here? I believe he has. 4.05 remaining third period, and Greg Chase will be sent off for a roughing minor at 15.55, and the Alberta Golden Bears leading 4-3, will now get a power play, but well, what I'm about not that sure. two not sure if there's a power play coming. I think they're going to call holding on Ringrose and, and then a rough, rough okay. against Chase. So You're right. A little bit of a Mary Kay call there, makeup call. And uh, that's a case of wanting the two teams to decide the outcome of this game and not giving a, a penalty to Greg Chase. There's been a lot let go tonight. Should mention Jamie Crooks has not played here in the third period. Uh, I think he got a little bit upset late in the second. And uh, ended up, I'm not sure what happened, but I think he took a little bit of a shot and was pretty frustrated at the Bears bench. He has not been out. And uh, Todd Nelson has played basically all of the Oilers rookies throughout the course of this game. Hasn't shortened the bench much. Oilers still with just the two shots in 16 minutes, and Bob, the last two minutes spent entirely in the Oilers zone. So now, in a five-on-five -five situation, the Golden Bears thrust it back into the offensive zone and continue the pressure. 3.45 to go in regulation, and here's a backhand flip out of play from Brandon Davidson, and the faceoff will take place to the right of goaltender Ty Rimmer, and here's where the CIS rules kick in. That could have been a penalty. Bears are down to, uh, yeah, they're basically playing 11 forwards right now. But Travis. it's not a penalty in university hockey, correct? No, not a penalty in university hockey. That's, that's your point. That's where we're going with the rules. Automatic icing. Too many. Tumi has upset the uh, Oilers rookies a bit tonight. Faceoff win for Rachinski. Shot from the high slot by Barto doesn't get through, and the Oilers try to fly the zone, but Linda Mulder is able to stymie their momentum, and now Tumi gets roughed up by Nurse. And let's see how they call this one. I mean, I thought it should have been chased by himself last time. This one, I thought Nurse brought his elbow up into the grill, and if he's the only man wow. that gets the call. That's a tough call against Darnell Nurse. That's a tough call against Darnell Nurse, or is it going to be Cameron Abney going to the box? Was here? it away from the play? There must have been something away from the play if Abney's yeah. going to the box. Are they sending them both? They're not sending them both, are they? Wow. They're not making this a five on three. They're making it a five. Well, I wonder if Abney's got the one minor right now. So who do you like for the three stars tonight, Jack? I think it's a given that Ringrose <laughs> is a star, agreed? No question about it. Best, it, best order rookie, Clefbaum? Yeah, I think Clefbaum would be in the mix. I think Reed Petrick might be their best forward up front tonight. And you like Lazo or Dick more? I think I like Lazo. Tonight. I was going to say I like Lazo more. So a face-off coming right side of goaltender Ty Rimmer. Five on three. Bears with a chance to gain an insurmountable edge here. Already leading 4-3. Top of the left circle, Cruz Reddick. Winding, faking, one-timer ripped on net by Jesse Craig and a save made by Rimmer. Back to Craig, high slot. He'll float a pass down low to Hickmott. Back to Craig, Hickmott left circle. Coper setting a screen in front, wrist shot, and that handcuffs Rimmer, but he's able to squeeze it and make the save. 
And no more rough stuff here. U of A better be careful or they're going to give away one of their power plays. Coper's and I think go Coper is. That's a very undisciplined play by Coper. Hickmont and Chase Shaver going at it. Those two played against each other in the WHL when Chase was with the Kamloops Blazers. Hickmont was in PA and then Edmonton. Not a smart play by oh. Lefko Coper. You got a chance to put this way one away, and now Greg Chase is chirping at Lefko Coper. No, you're exactly I'm, right. I'm disappointed in the lack of discipline in tonight's game. I think Alberta traditionally has been a very look. This is the one game all year. They're, they're, they get a huge crowd, and the Bears are often the favorite. And people that maybe aren't as sophisticated and don't realize that they're an older team. Coper got a double minor here, Jack. So we got four on three for a minute 31, and then the Oilers are going to get a power play. That's a dumb well, play, by They're that. not only going to get a power play, Bob, but they're going to get a power play for, what, the the whole balance of the hockey game. I mean, yeah. They'll be on the power play for the last 90 seconds of the hockey game. Just a silly penalty for Coper to take. He didn't need to. I mean, there was nothing there. Off the faceoff, U of A controls. They're still on a four on three for the next minute 20, but then the final 90 seconds of this game will be an Oiler power play. So if Edmonton can kill it off, the Oilers would have a power play and a chance to tie the hockey game. Four three, our score, Golden Bears. Work themselves into the offensive zone. Here's Cruz Reddick. Out to the high slot, drifting to the top of the right circle is Craig. Now Lazo left circle, waiting, shooting. And he sailed that one over everything. Skipped off the glass and Reddick did not handle it cleanly either. Petrick made a steal, kicked it back to Davidson for a length of the ice clear. No Sean Ringrose right now on the Golden Bears bench, and he's not on the ice either, and that's the guy you'd think would be out there. He's had the hot hand tonight. Craig up the right-hand side. Three goals and an assist for Ringrose. And he's looking at potentially his second game-winning goals many games against the Oiler rookies. Add the G-Dub back in 2009. Here's a one-timer rip toward the net by Craig. Block shot for Awanek. Final 25 seconds of this Golden Bear power play. Four on three variety. They lead the game 4-3. Taking his time was Torrey Dick. Over to the right side. Now switching is Reddick. High slot between circles. Waiting, firing, deflected, and shoveled out by Joey Leach. An alert play to find the puck at your feet in close quarters. And now... This power play is over, and it's a five on four for the Oilers for the final 90 seconds. Launching it up the left-hand side after recognizing as such was Kong. Oilers carrying it up the right-hand side. Here's Platzer down the right wing. Tried to center, that was deflected. Ferguson attempts to clear, gets some help from Linda Mulder, who rifles one pass, cleft bomb at the point. And now there's going to be one minute left in this hockey game. The Oilers on a power play, trailing 4-3. Here comes Edmonton left to right. Glads are over the line. Will they remove Ty Rimmer and go for the six on four here? Down low along the inboards. Rimmer heading for the bench. Extra attacker on, six on four. Linda Mulder hit his own man with an attempted clear, but Carr found it, and it was ultimately chipped off the glass and out by Hickmod. And now... We'll have the Oilers chasing it down in their own end. Down to 35 seconds to go. 4-3, the University of Alberta. Here's Darnell Nurse with a half minute to go in regulation. Oilers down a goal, they need the equalizer. Petrick turned it over to Colin Joe, who ripped it back into the Oilers' zone. 20 seconds to play, Edmonton down a goal. Here's Nurse, the seventh overall pick. Left wing dish for Petrick, cross corner dump. Chasing it down, Austin fighting, taking hard against the boards. Six on four, big hit, centering pass, broken up. The Bears are able to clear, pass Marincin. Five seconds to go. Marincin will chase it down, taken away by Cruz Reddick, and the U of A hangs on for a 4-3 victory. The Golden Bears permit the Oilers just two shots on goal in the entire third period, and they'll claim their eighth win in the last 10 games of this rivalry, which is now 13 wins for the University of Alberta and 10 for the Oiler rookies. A third period in which, Bob, the Oilers mustered just two shots on goal against Luke Siemens and the Golden Bears. The teams will now line up at center for the traditional post-game handshake. Well, Alberta really stepped up the four checks, specifically in the unit. 
of ring rolls with Lazo and Dick, and they were all over the Oiter rookies as this game wore on. Uh, I think a very resilient performance by the Edmonton Oiter rookies on a lot of different fronts. I think we saw Nurse and Clefbaum separate from the field. You saw the ability and the skill set that those big defensemen had. Also, Martin Marichin as this game wore on. And those are, you know, three of the better prospects for the Oilers organization. Reed Petrick gave the Oilers rookies something up front. Of that, there could be no debate. He came in, he won some key face-offs. He had a pretty good game overall. Uh, besides that, I mean, the only type of goals that they were going to muster were going to be the scrambly type in around the net. And they got a couple of lucky bounces. Both teams basically gave up a goal they like to have back. Muka, for sure, the first one against uh, that made it a 1-1 game. And then the 4-2, the eventual game-winning goal that Tyler Buns gives up to Sean Ringrose. Now, Ringrose hit the crossbar later on in that period and was all over the ice uh, in the third as well. But it was one of those games in which both teams competed hard. I think the other rookies ran out of a little bit of gas and maybe Alberta's maturity and experience and their... Uh, structure and process that they play with because they're a regular team that's back. Sure. Right? They got the whole team back. And as exactly. this one wore on, you could see that the organized chaos that created a couple of the Oida rookie goals, that should happen when you've got bigger bodies crashing the crease. But conversely, Alberta had, you know, the nicer set of goals, and so they should. They play together year round. Well, and the other thing, Bob, you mentioned Nurse and Clefbaum and Marinchin. And I know that you and I, certainly in that first game against Calgary, particularly the first 20 minutes, were yeah. alarmed yeah. at what was going on back there. And I think as this rookie camp has progressed, the higher echelon picks have kind of, you know, water seeks its level. And I think we've seen some of those Oiler prospects working themselves into it, getting used to the pace of play, getting used to maybe some of the different positions that the yeah. puck is going to wind up in. As you said, sometimes it's easier to play at a higher level. It and is, I think especially for defense. Yeah, and I, I think some of these Oilers rookies adjusted as this rookie camp wore on. You know, Jack, the Oilers' strongest prospects, their top two prospects, and we'll discuss this ad nauseum during the course of this tournament. Sure. Oscar Clefbaum only played 11 games last year in Farstad, okay? And then Darnell Nurse, who is a major, uh, you know, he, he's a stud. He is, he's getting, you know, seventh overall pick, but he's still very raw. And, and tonight, again, we saw the explosion when he elected to activate, jump up and join the rush, and come in and pinch from the point, try to create plays. Marinchin made some plays tonight where he angled guys off and effectively showed some poise and some experience. And you can tell he's one year further along the process than a guy like Martin Gurnap. And then Davidson's the guy that's kind of come from nowhere. Jordan Everly's former teammate with the Regina Pats. You know, you can see that he is a guy that the coaches have worked with down on the farm. And he's worked himself into the fabric of the Oilers in the future. I mean, he has passed guys like Colton Tubert and Alex Plant that are no longer with the Edmonton Oilers, former first round draft choices on the back end. So. They've got depth in that position. But again tonight, offensively, there were serious limitations. Marco Wall, especially with Jujar Karia and Andrew Miller out of the lineup. Sure. And I, I, Wall's the only guy who was chosen before round three yeah. up front. And as far as the elite level offensive talent, it tends to run in cycles at this yeah. level. You and I saw the flip side of this a couple of years ago. And now you're in a bit of a cycle where, again, the Oilers are concentrating on an organizational need. And as a result, their two highest level prospects at this tournament, both defensemen. And Oscar Kleppon, one more point we should make yeah. is we're not just talking about 11 games last year. He's played 67 games in the last three years yeah. combined. He and needs reps. He may place. He's going to probably play. He's going to play more than that this, this year. year. You know, And I, I think he'll get games at the NHL level. It won't happen right away. He's going to need to put some time in an Oklahoma City. You know, I think we're looking at a guy who has the potential to be a top, let's face it, he's going to be a top four NHL defenseman. Craig Button refers to him as a left shooting version of Brent Seabrook. Brent Seabrook's a top two NHL defenseman. In my mind, I'm not sure Oscar has that elite level dimension offensively. Conversely, I look at Nurse, the speed and the fiber twitch that he has and that ability, and he was going for it in the last two games that we saw. He wasn't wasting any time, and he plays with a bit of an edge. He doesn't take any crap out there. And, I, you know, I think Oiler fans watching tonight on EdmontonOilers.com and listening to us at 630 Chet, they're pleased with how Darnell Nurse asserted himself. And then the two wild cards are Marinchin and Gurnat. Okay? We didn't see Musil tonight. He's going to be a third pairing, a hard-nosed, shut-down defenseman. But he's going to need to work on his footwork. That was blatantly obvious when he played against similar-type prospects over the course of the three games in Penticton. And then Davidson's a guy that can move it. 
and I look at Davidson and Taylor Fadoon, the Oilers are okay at, at defense. My concern for the Oilers carrying forward is where, where is the second wave of forwards coming? I mean, I guess when you got four forwards named Hall, Nugent Hopkins, Everle, and Yakupov, not to mention Gagne and Perron, who are a little bit older, and, and in fairness to Gagne, he's less than a year older than Everle, that's a pretty good top six, but the Oilers need some other guys to come through the gaps. And one of the guys that did a great job, we didn't see him tonight, Jujar Carey, I think, really woke up some eye. And I, I think Jujar is now a guy that is in the top, say, six or seven of Oilers prospects in the organization. Tremendous progression. Another guy that has made the decision to get more reps and go to the Western Hockey yeah. League as opposed to playing 30-some-odd games for Michigan Tech in each college season. And, uh, you know, one of the things to look forward now, Bob, and we're going to be back on the air Saturday, immediately yep. following the Edmonton Eskimos games for the first of seven NHL preseason broadcasts that we'll have for you right here on 630 Ched is which of these rookies that we've seen will blend in nicely at main camp. Yeah. A couple things have happened here. We know now there's some injuries to some guys, right? We know that Jujar Kara is uh, he's he's nicked up. And the other guy is Andrew Miller. And I wonder if that doesn't open up an opportunity for a couple more forwards to be included to the main camp. Uh, maybe some guys that we thought weren't going to be in that position. I think that the Oilers, you know, they also saw something tonight in Ty Rimmer. Did Ty Rimmer not look mature and composed in that goal? No question for about the, it. Uh, for the Edmonton Oilers rookies. There are people in the Oilers organization that think Ty Rimmer has a chance to be a better goaltender than Tyler Buns. And that's part of the reason why he was brought here. So um, I, I look for Ty Rimmer to get invited to the main camp. Obviously, Buns will be going forward. The other two goaltenders that we saw, your favorite Philippe young, Cataret. Cataret and... Well, of course, yes. Frankie Balotelli. How can you? How can you miss okay. Balotelli? I, 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 you were you were obviously prompting me for pronunciation. Yes. There. Yes. Yes. Though you know, I'm not sure those guys carry forward, right. but but I can tell you right now that we will definitely be. See, I think we'll see Ty Rimmer get more another look here. I mean, he didn't get a chance to play until the back half of this game. Gave his team a chance to win. Didn't give up. Didn't give up a goal. You know, and uh, and then in terms of the forward, I actually think there's a couple forwards here. Ty, Ty Bilkey, to me gets a chance to carry forward he does job you know he fought a couple times this isn't a game for Ty Bilkey no there's no fighting in this so sure. you, you know um, and so it, there's there's a couple guys Reed Petrick's probably going to get another opportunity based upon his performance tonight to carry forward as a you know straight lines to the net yeah under, was uh, under, undrafted free agent that'll get another look but all in all I don't think there's too many people with the Oilers brass that'll be disappointed with tonight's performance I think they know they know they played a structured smart intelligent mature team that frankly played a little bit disciplined. I was a little, uh, a little bit undisciplined, a little bit disappointed in Alberta's overall performance. Dumb penalty by Levko Cooper at the end of the game when you have a chance. After fortunate, he didn't cost his team the game. Right, right there. after a ticky tacky double minor tee up call against the Oilers rookies, I did not. I could see the one call being made, but not the two. And uh, you know, Cooper gave the Oilers rookies a chance to tie it. That was a pretty selfish play by Levko Cooper. Full marks though for the Golden Bears, limiting the Oilers prospects to just two shots over the final 20 minutes. This, of course, just wets. Our appetite for our listeners and it. our viewers, yeah, for NHL preseason action again, getting underway Saturday, immediately following the Edmonton Eskimos contest. Tomorrow, medical and physicals at Rexall Place, and then an opportunity for some Sherwood Park fans to check out the Oilers Thursday and Friday. You're it's, a happy guy. Well, I, I am. It'll be a home ice advantage for me, but main camp gets going, and, uh, of course, our broadcast run that continues Saturday against Calgary and then road games against Vancouver and Winnipeg before we return home to Rexall Place. And later on in camp, actually a three-day camp down in Oklahoma City where the Oilers will meet the Dallas Stars. That'll do it for tonight. Hey, the biggest point we'd like to make tonight, bring this game back another year. This, huh? is a, this was a good game. Good I hope we got another 22 of these I in front of us. Well, that'll put you in your 40s and me in my 60s, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun tonight. An up tempo, hard hitting competitive hockey game won by the University of Alberta. 4 3 over the Edmonton Oilers prospects. Again, Sean Ringrose with a hat trick and an assist to lead the Golden Bears to victory. That's going to do it from Claire Drake Arena for Bob Stoffer, Reed Wilkins. This is Jack Michaels saying good night from the campus of the University of Alberta where the Golden Bears hold off the Oilers prospects by a count of 4 3. I'm Jack Michaels, and ladies and gentlemen, truly the pleasure has been all mine.